Greetings ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Library of the Unwritten. I am the Archiver. Back with today's stories. Today's series is what if Deku was a leader of a civil war. Before we start, give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you want more content like this. Now let's get into it. Important information for this story that will be different from the canon of the MHA. Story Divergences. This is at the end of the first year. The whole new arc of the canon manga hasn't happened yet nor will happen in this story. Izuku will have control of up to 50% of Ofe. I've always had a problem with how slow he got a hang of Ofe. Also, wouldn't he be in the gym training non-stop for the most part, if he had just gotten a quirk that requires more muscle to use more control, never had made sense. As such, Izuku in this story has spent far more time, this will not increase in this story. Everyone only thinks he has around 25% of Ofe under his control. The only people that knew is All Might since they trained together in Nezu. If Izuku used 50% in normal attacks, he would likely kill someone if they can't stand it. As such, they limited Izuku to only using 25% in class, and allows him to use more on the field with more experienced villains. Izuku will have control of Black Whip in this story, but won't have float yet. So quirks he has are Ofa at 50% and Black Whip. The Kugo also does not know how Izuku gained his quirk in this story. The Kugo only knows that Izuku is claiming to be a late bloomer. As such, their relationship is a bit more hostile than in canon near the end of the year. That is all. Now let's get into the story. The day was a typical day for all the students. However, soon it was about to take a turn for the worse for one student in class 1A Izuku Midoriya could feel that the day was off for some reason, but he didn't know what it was. All of his friends seemed fine and nothing set off alarms, but for some reason, his body was screaming at him that today would not have a good start. Listen up. The principal wants everyone to head to the school assembly hall. I haven't been told what this meeting is about so don't ask me. Get moving. As always stated. Then he got back into his sleeping bag and started to crawl towards the assembly hall. Everyone just sweat dropped at that moment, but soon got up and followed their teacher. About 5 minutes later they also saw class 1B heading towards the assembly hall. Each class asked each other if they knew and either did. Izuku kept feeling uneasy as more time passed. It seemed whatever was setting Izuku off would happen in the assembly hall he thought. After about 15 minutes of waiting in the assembly hall for the principal to show up, they heard small clapping. Everyone turned around and saw Nezu standing on the stage with the rest of their teachers. Welcome everyone. I have had decided to bring back a new training exercise based on recent villain trends. We are seeing an increase in organized crime. As such, I have decided to bring back the hero vs villain war game. Nezu stated with a happy expression. He's doing this so he can have some entertainment. Thought Izuku. Everyone was surprised even the teachers. Well most of them. Anyway, we will pick two leaders. One commander of the heroes and one villain leader. After that, each person will enter the booths and drop their name ball into the machine to pick the team they want to be on. It's your choice which team you wish to be on. Nezu said as present Mick got up and started to try and make people cheer. He wasn't successful. Well, whatever. Now to announce the leader of the villain team and the villain team leader is Izuku Midoriya. Mick yelled out. Well, I'm starting to get why I felt so off today Izuku thought. Everyone just gave Izuku looks of pity which annoyed Izuku since it reminded him of his past. Now for the hero team leader. We have Kasuki Bakugo. Mick yelled out which caused Bakugo to get up and yell out. I'm going to destroy you Deku. Bakugo yelled. Everyone just looked at Izuku and gave him more looks of pity. Soon it was time for everyone to pick their teams. However, this just made Izuku's feeling of something going wrong increase, and he was right. Now let us look at the team results. Mick yelled out, and the results showed themselves. It was horrible. Everyone had picked to be on the hero team since they didn't want to become villains. Some though joined because they were friends with Bakugo like his main group, but others didn't want to join the villain team and be projected in that light for a large-scale game. Everyone was silent. That's not fair. Izuku wouldn't be able to do anything to any of us. Yelled out Yuraka. The moment she said that it made something in Izuku snap. Her words made him remember everyone in his past that thought he couldn't do anything. That he was worthless. That he was just glass and needed to be looked after. Indeed, it seems I will need to change the tea. Nezu started talking, but was cut off by Izuku. No. Don't change the teams. Please leave the teams as they are. I'll do it by myself. Izuku said with a smile on his face, but if someone with experience looked into his eyes, they could see the rage. The teachers and students were shocked that Izuku cut Nezu off. Nezu and All Might though had a good view of Izuku's eyes unlike everyone else. My boy. What is with that look in your eyes? Thought All Might. Interesting. The look in his eyes reminds me of myself. 
Has he been underplaying his strength and intelligence? Thought Nezu. The students and teachers were trying to get Izuku to reconsider, and said things like, That wouldn't be fair to you. This made Izuku laugh inside a bit, and responded with life isn't fair. You think big natural disasters are, or power-hungry villains are fair? No, they aren't. The world is full of unfairness. It's a hero's job to try to combat that unfairness. Even on the field, you won't always have the number advantage against the villains. As such, if you want to be a pro we're gonna have to push ourselves to the brink. This is just another time I will need to push myself. Izuku said. This made everyone silent, and Izawa was shocked. No one knew what to say. It seems we have our teams then. Team leaders, you will have a private meeting with me today. The Kugo you are first and Midoriya I will call you when I'm done with him. Everyone you are done with classes today. Please return to the dorms. Nezu said. The Kugo was a bit shocked but got over it, since he thought it would be easy to crush Deku. Everyone went back to their dorms, but Izuku stayed for a few moments. Nezu had already provided them all with a general rule book that would answer most questions. Though, the team leaders would be allowed to have a Q&A session with Nezu today, but also any time before the exam started. Izuku just sat in the assembly hall and started to read through the rules. He was making marks and notes on anything and everything that he could find. He wanted to know all the loopholes that he could use to his advantage. Izuku's mind was going into overdrive and he let it. All the thoughts he had on how to take advantage of the rules were going through his mind because of how much he enjoys analyzing things. Soon 40 minutes had passed and Nezu showed back up in the assembly hall, since he saw on the cameras that Izuku was still here. The meeting with Bakugo was only 10 minutes, and he had asked very few questions. Most of them were just how much damage they could cause Izuku before we called the game Izuku however, has been looking through the book non-stop. Thought Nezu. Hello Izuku it's time for us to have our meeting, Nezu said which made Izuku look up. Indeed it is Principal Nezu, said Izuku with a gleam in his eyes. Nezu was still trying to figure out what changed in Izuku. What had happened from this morning to this moment. Wait unfair life is unfair I see. It seems I've overlooked the influence of Izuku's corkless life has had. It seems he has suppressed a lot of himself to survive. It seems I was right when I picked him as the villain leader. I knew he was smarter and more analytical than he had let on, but I think even I underestimated by how much. Nezu thought. Both Nezu and All Might were in Nezu's office. Izuku had asked Nezu to call for All Might as well, and this confused Nezu a bit since this was only a Q&A session. However, they waited 10 minutes and All Might showed up. My boy. Good to see you, but why did you have Nezu call me for the Q&A session? All Might asked the question they both wanted to know. Several reasons. I'm assuming you both noticed a shift in my attitude and want answers about that. Izuku asked. Both Nezu and All Might thought they would need to work that answer out, but they were happy he was going to give it. Yes, we both would like to know. I think we're the only ones that noticed the look in your eyes during the assembly. Nezu stated. As you both know, I was quirkless until I received Ofa. All Might, you said you know how it feels to be quirkless, but I need to ask what was your experience during your life, because I would be beaten day in and day out at my old schools. The teachers would encourage my fellow students to use their quirks on me and never stop the bullies. I have so many scars that I've hidden from the world because of my past. I've even been told to take a swan dive off a roof and pray for a quirk in my next life by one of my former friends turned bully. So All Might, was your quirkless days like mine since I've had to put up with all that for a decade, since I was told I was quirkless at the age of four? Izuku asked. Neither All Might and Nezu knew what to say. Nezu knew that discrimination was bad, but this was going from bullying and assault to prolonged torture. No mine wasn't. Quirkless people were rare, but more of us were around than now. I'm so sorry my boy. I didn't realize how bad it has gotten and never asked if you needed to talk to myself or someone else. All Might said while having a disgusted look on his face. He was disgusted with society. The reason for the shift in my attitude was because of what happened in the assembly. It made me feel like I was back in my old schools. As such, I'm no longer holding myself back. Grand Tornio said I've been trying to replicate you so much. He is right All Might. I've been suppressing my intelligence and abilities for too long. I'm more of a hybrid between you and Nezu than anything else. Izuku said as he took his hero notebook out and gave it to Nezu. Nezu started to go through the book and was shocked. I would agree. You have been holding yourself back on the intelligence front. You have methods to take our nearly every classmate and teacher here at UA and a lot of other heroes. Nezu said while well, Izuku just grabbed another book called Villain Analyze. Nezu was even more shocked since there were some villains that were currently out on the run, and Izuku had methods to capture them that Nezu thought was possible. Izuku, mind if I copy some of these to give out to heroes for active cases. 
You have ideas to catch some of the villains that are currently on the run, and these ideas seem like they would work. Nezu asked and got approval. It seems you are right my boy. You are a hybrid of Nezu and me. I didn't think much of those books when I first saw them. That seems to be my fault that I never brought them up to Nezu, since he could have helped you get better at it and explore your other abilities than just Ofa. All Might said. Nezu agreed since he had some plans in his mind of maybe taking Izuku on as a student after the game ends. All Might, before I start asking Nezu questions, I wanted to know something. Outside of my annoyance with my classmates currently, I feel like everyone thinks that they will always win the battles. That isn't true is it? Izuku asked. No, it isn't my boy. The only reason I win so much is because of my overwhelming strength. Even then, I don't save everyone. All Might said. Izuku stayed silent for a few moments and then spoke again. I want to show them that. With the rise of villains that are more like Eifo and the Yakuza. I believe my fellow students all think we will keep dealing with unorganized threats like the League when we won't be. We will deal with more people like Overhaul or Eifo who have long plans and hide in the shadows while they harm people. They don't play fair at all and will do anything to win. Izuku said. He then looked at Nezu and then at All Might with a hardened look. All Might, will you stay by my side because when this game starts. I plan to be unfair. I plan to do many things that are unheroic. I plan to do things that will likely have them all hating me by the end of this. I plan to become a full-fledged villain during that game. All of my bullies and people in my life said I could never be a hero All Might. So let us see what I would have been as a villain. Izuku said with a cold and serious tone that sent chills down Nezu and All Might's spines. My boy I will stand by you regardless. If we need to find you a new school at the end of this, then I have many connections. Especially connections with hero schools in America that I will take you to if I need to. You are my successor and I will always stand by your side. Though thank you for warning me about this beforehand, or else I might have gone crazy with my thoughts during the game if you didn't. I also agree. The students are not going to be facing threats like the love all the time. There is an increase in villains from my prime that were far more dangerous than love. These threats will kill the students if they aren't ready because heroes don't always win, and they don't always save everyone. So my boy let yourself free of your cage that you have placed yourself in because of this society, and show them what true danger is. All Might said. Nezu was silent for a few more moments and said, I have to agree with everything said. I picked you as the villain team leader because I knew you were holding yourself back, but I underestimated your abilities. Izuku, go wild. Hold nothing back. Use any method you can that is within the rules, since I know you have gone through so many loopholes in my rules that I've allowed. Also, know that I will support you regardless of how this ends. I will also help you find another school if you feel like you cannot stay here after this exam, but please do show the teachers and students that the threats we will be facing have now changed. Now let us start our Q&A. Nezu said. Soon Izuku found out that his loopholes that he found could be used. He found out that the heroes just have to capture him, and needed evidence of any crime he committed to proving his guilt. They could detain him for four hours before they had to release him if they didn't have anything. Izuku had to kill the heroes off or make them give up. To be considered dead in this game the students need to be knocked out or be hit with enough damage to be determined dead. I.e. a paintball gunshot to the head would be a death or a bomb going off and painting them to show damage. The teachers would be the ones calling them out based on their judgment. Izuku would be given two entire days in the game site before the heroes since villains have time in the real world before heroes show up to their city or base. Izuku was given permission to use a lot of things and would take classes for the tools he wanted to use. Izuku also found out that there would be student reporters and robots in the game, so the heroes had to save anyone that was in danger and not just focus on Izuku. The hero students would also not be provided money. But the stores would have food and supplies, as well as the hero base, would have supplies to last them through the supplies would only be stocked the day the heroes enter. Soon Izuku had finished asking questions to Nezu and only had one for All Might. All Might, I'm going to use some mental torture, and I need your help in creating one scene for a video I will play in the city. I need to recreate the rooftop Izuku asked, and Nezu and All Might were stunned. What was Izuku planning? Everyone had returned to the dorms for the night, and soon the next day had arrived. The game would happen after one week of training and preparation. Though it seemed like the hero team was taking this easy since there was only one person on the villain team. The hero team wasn't planning or preparing for the game. The only thing that was said from the Kugo was that they would hunt down Deku and destroy him. Izuku however was planning and training for the exam. Part of the preparation that Izuku was doing was some sort of video that he asked for All Might's help on. All Might was confused but was told by Izuku that he will reveal the fact that he was corkless and some of his past for everyone to see and known about. 
though he would go with the lie about being a late bloomer to cover Ofe. As such, Izuku had gotten some recording equipment and some help from students in the business course, and started making a video. The only parts All Might knew about were the rooftop and the finding Izuku the second time. The second interaction though was worded differently from the true interaction to hide the truth about Ofe. Izuku told All Might that he might take a hit in his reputation if he helps with the video, but All Might was willing to have it revealed, since he needed to own up to it publicly, if it ever got out anyway. Izuku was so happy that he accidentally called All Might Dad, which caused them both to blush. No problem my bo son. All Might responded which made Izuku far happier, but Izuku needed to focus back on the task at hand. Izuku Pav. I have most of the video done and the voice is recreated. It took me all weekend, but the business course student will help me finish it off. Now I need to attend my first day of official training with Snipe for the guns and bomb training. I thought. I walked into the gun range and met Snipe who was informed of my request. Hello Midoriya. I've been told you want to use guns and explosives in the game. To allow you to use this we need to do a lot of training to get you the certifications for using them. If you pass you can keep using guns and explosives even during your hero career, since the certifications will carry for life, as long as you attend refresher courses every two years to stay on top of it. Snipe said. Soon we got started on the weapons that I wanted to use during the exam. One gun was a sniper rifle to allow me to kill from long range, and penetrate some of the student's armor, since it had enough power to do. Even though the paintball bullet won't go through, Snipe said that if it hits about certain areas it will be considered a kill, since the sniper with the real bullet could go through the student's armors. The next weapon I was trained in using was live grenades, so I could get the certificate. Though, I plan to only use paintball hand grenades, which only explodes paint instead. Snipe said it was better to just get the training out of the way, regardless since it didn't take that long. After the grenade, we moved to the next few weapons which were handgun and C4 explosives. The handgun was also just going to use paintball bullets, but I got certified in the training anyway. Last was the C4 which would be live C4. This training took the longest because it can cause real damage. I had plans for blowing up some buildings and wanted to learn how to use the C4, so I could attack while in a different area. Dirt Pav. The training took most of the day, and Izuku was tired from it all. He decided that he would go find All Might, and spent the remainder of the day with him, since classes for the training week and the game week have been cancelled. As Izuku was walking towards the staff room to find All Might he ran into his friends from the class. I still feel a bit annoyed at them Izuku thought. Izuku. Want to hang out with us? They asked. Sorry, I'm looking for All Might at the moment, and have some plans to do some stuff since I got some free time, Izuku said with a smile that was fake currently. Oh. Alright. We will see you later then. Yuraka said. As they walked away, Izuku could hear them talk about the fact that Izuku seemed not to be doing any training for the exam like their team isn't, and that he must be giving up. This annoyed Izuku because his own friends thought he was just going lay down and give up. The days of Izuku just rolling over have come to an end. Izuku was going to go into the battle with the intention of winning. Time skip, second day of training. Izuku Pav. All Might and I spent the last portion of yesterday talking about random things, and also got into my past a bit more. All Might really wanted to know more of my past, so he could know how he could better help me. As such, I told him everything. From the doctor's office and my mother not supporting me to the suicide beating from Kak, no Bakuago. All Might was pissed when he learned of who was my main bully was. All Might had confessed and thought it was some sort of rivalry, and that he was sorry. He also told me that he would ensure that Nezu knew everything, so I wasn't forced to team up like the final exam. All Might had also asked me to start seeing Hound Dog after the exercise, and wanted me to at least meet him twice before the game started. It was eventful, to say the least. I had asked All Might to sit in with me since he already knew about everything. I may have thrown a chair and made a hole in the wall. All Might and Hound Dog said it was fine since I'm just now unpacking a decade worth of emotions and trauma. We found I had several issues mentally and was given some coping methods which actually seemed to help me a bit at night when I tried to go to sleep. After Hound Dog, I decided to go do some training and planning. I had a new outfit being made by Mei with some new fun tours. Mei was happy to make everything for me. I also had some plans with some business students as I wanted to have a legit business created in the city that I would run. Most villains that are starting to come will have organized crime, which means that they will have legit businesses as well. As such, I wanted to make this event as real as possible, since the heroes couldn't arrest me if they didn't have enough proof to connect me to the crimes. My villain suit had a mask as well that hid my face. 
As such, unless they can unmask me in my villain outfit, I will be able to walk in broad daylight in my professional outfit without being arrested. Time skip, day 3 of training. Izuka Pav. Some of the toys that Mei had created for me included small drones that were hard to trace and find. I used this drone to spy on my opposing team during the training week, since in the rules it said that the game officially started the first day of training. Meaning that we were allowed to deploy tactics and spying to gain information on the other team. I had Nezu clear my plan of spying with a drone during the training week, and he said it was allowed since the game had started day one of training. In the real world, villains would want to gain information on the heroes and heroes would want information on the villains. As such, I've started to look over the video footage from day 2 and day 3 so far, since I only received the drones from May at the start of day 2. I found that they had only little meetings about the exam, and weren't planning to do much teamwork training or training at all. They were just doing their own normal individual training. I also found the overall plan was to find me and defeat me. It seems that Bakugo didn't read the rules much since, unless they have evidence they cannot arrest me. They could only detain me for a max of 4 hours for questions which I don't even have to comply with. Time skip, day 4 of training. Izuku Pav. I've been talking to Nezu and clarifying a few more things that I plan. Such as blowing buildings up and killing civilian robots. Nezu agreed that the heroes would have to respond to any threats in the city, and reconfirmed that the heroes have to put civilian lives above capturing me. This opens me up to do so many things. I had also confirmed that Nezu knew the truth about the hero killer incident, since I might have some plans to use some mental torture on Lita and Todoroki, if forced to go that route. After talking to Nezu I went to do some physical training in a closed off section of the training grounds, that most people don't visit, courtesy of Nezu telling Izuku about it at request. I wanted to get used to my villain outfit and normal outfits, so I could move fast and the men not screw up. Near the end of the day, I checked the recordings again and saw the drones that were following everyone showed little training and planning. Suddenly, I had a new question to ask Nezu. The hero team didn't seem to have a leadership structure in the event Bakugo was taken out. What if I take him out? Who is in charge? Time skip, day 5 of training. Last day. Izuku Pav. The event starts tomorrow for me since as the villain I received two entire days in the city zone before the heroes arrive. I decided to go ask Nezu my question. Hello Izuku. Today is your last day before you enter the zone. What can I do for you? Nezu asked. Hello Nezu. My question is what happens if I take Bakugo out of the game early on? Does the game keep going or does it end? If it keeps going, then who is in charge of the hero team? I asked him. Nezu looked gleeful. The game keeps going. Even with the fall of their leader heroes need to keep going. Unlike villains that tend to break up and scatter if the head of the organization is defeated in organized crime sometimes. As such, leadership falls to whoever they decided. Though if they didn't then who knows who will step up and take charge. They just might break apart into small groups. Nezu said. He confirmed what I needed to know. Also, one more. What happens if a hero takes another hero out? I asked. It hasn't happened before, but the hero that took the other hero out would be disqualified due to the murder of their own teammate. That would get them arrested in the real world. Nezu said. I doubt it I can get them to take each other out, but it's nice to know what happens. Thank you Nezu. It's time for the fall of a hero wouldn't you say? I said as I lost my normal expression and put on a face that made Nezu shiver. My eyes started to look devoid of my normal emotions, and my smile took a more scary expression when combined with my eyes. What's wrong Nezu-sensei? I asked. It seems Mei's eye color changing contacts are working well. I thought. Mei had created the contacts to change colors based on keywords I say as such, they will change to certain colors when I want them to. This is to hide my identity during the game, since they need evidence connecting me to the villain that attacks them, as well as to make things more dramatic. I can't wait to see the reactions they have to Yuzuku. I hope they learned something from this since I know they haven't really planned it trained as a team. You however have been putting a lot of work into this. I suggest you go see All Might before you go to bed today, since it will be a full week before you see any of the staff again. Nezu said. I thanked Nezu and headed off to find All Might. Soon I found him walking on one of the trails on campus. All Might, I yelled. He turned around and waited for me to catch up to him. My boy. You go out into the event grounds tomorrow. How do you feel? All Might asked. I've done what I can. I'm just glad you will be waiting for me at the end of this, because I don't know what mental state I will be in at the end of this. I plan to let my self-control go for the most part, and just fall into the darkness that dwells within the deepest parts of my mind. I said. As I said. I will be here no matter what. Even if we need to transfer to another school in Japan or go to America. 
Do what you must and show them that the world isn't fair and that the heroes don't always win. All Might said. We just walked in silence after this and soon made our way to my dorm. As we entered I saw the entire class wanted downstairs eating dinner. Izuku. Ready for the event Monday. Lita asked me with his hands chopping the air. Indeed. I said in my normal voice and smiled that they are used to. The Kugo and a few others just mentioned that it's going to be a short event since Midoriya was by himself. Oh, how wrong they are. All Might and Izuku thought at the same time. Soon All Might and I made it to my dorm. He wished me luck and I turned around and looked at him. Thanks All Might. It's time for the fall of a hero wouldn't you say? I said did the same look and eye color change as I did to Nezu. All Might looked shocked for a second with a split second of fear going through his eyes at my sudden change. He claimed himself down and looked at me with a hardened expression. Indeed it's Spite also known as the leader of the fallen hearts. All Might said. It was time for my two days to start. Ironically since none of them read the rules, I don't think they realize that I have two days extra in the city zone where the event will be held. Only Bakugo was given the rule book, and none of my recordings have shown him sharing the rules with his team. Overall, most actions won't violate the rules, but still, they are going to be so pissed with the stuff I plan to do to them. I have also checked my drone video from last night, and found that they all were doing light talking about the event. Overall, they still haven't planned that much for the event. The only useful information that they have talked about is the fact that they haven't set up a fallback leadership, even though Todoroki had brought it up. In the words of Bakugo, we will crush Deku in the first day. We don't need to plan much outside of locating him and then defeating him. Overall, the hero team hasn't planned much outside of trying to find me and arresting me. Though from the conversations I think they don't realize that they need proof to hold me longer than 4 hours and to win. I guess I can use that to my advantage. I made my way to Nezu's office where I would then be taken to the event grounds. Time skip. Izuku Pav. Nezu and the rest of the staff took me to the event grounds. It was a very detailed city. I was amazed at the level of detail that they had put into his place. Nezu had also whispered to me that only he, All Might, and Snipe know about the guns and explosives, so none of the other teachers know currently. As such, the staff will be also reacting to what I do as well. This was going to be fun. Nezu gave me an earpiece so the staff could talk to me in the event of something. Nezu provided me the address of my base and told me that everything I requested is there. I was allowed to move bases and set up in another place if I want. I could do anything I want as long as I don't go outside the border walls. Thank you and let the first act preparation start. Also, All Might. Are you sure you don't have a problem with the parts that will be shown about you? I asked one more time. This confused everyone but All Might and Nezu. It's okay my boy. If it helps you get the point across that you aim for in this event then do it. I always regretted what I did to you that day my boy I'm just glad I was able to make some amends. Again my boy. I am sorry about that day. All Might said which just made all the staff confused. Even Nezu since he didn't know what happened just that I had a video made about some rooftop. All Might what are you two talking about? What did you do that you regret? Nezu asked but I stopped them from pushing. Nezu, you enjoy a good show. Why ruin the fun and shock factor? It will be more important that you see the entire video in full. The day All Might regrets is the same day my entire life could have ended differently. I said. I turned around and made my way into the city. I used Ofa to quickly move around the place, and I located some important places. Hero HQ, since they can't really change locations. City Hall. Banks. Hospital. Fire Station. Police Station. Jail. Water Plant, control the water supply in the city. Electrical plant, controls all power in the city. News station, controls the TV news in the city. Soon I made my way to my base after spending 3 hours roaming the city trying to get a good grasp on it. I soon found my lair which was an underground old train station that isn't marked on the maps. I decided to move some of my supplies to other areas that I found in my trip around the city, to ensure that if the heroes found this place, I would be able to live and have weapons. Nezu provided me everything I had requested. I had a shit ton of explosives, guns, and ammo. I had enough to move some supplies to other locations as drop-off locations. After separating everything out and moving some of the supplies to other places, I decided to get to work on my explosive plans. I was required to alert the staff to any explosions that I was setting off, and also the locations I placed the bombs at. This was to ensure that staff could be ready to save any student in the event of an emergency, or if I don't use them at all, so Snipe could disarm them with ectoplasm clones, which is as smart on their part. The first place I was placing bombs was in the hero's building. The building is being treated as an empty space currently that just got recently bought and is being renovated. 
None of the other buildings make sense for the Hero HQ. As such, I placed some explosives in the room where the food should be stored and small explosives in the pipes under their bathrooms. Now it was time to move towards placing explosives around the city that I would use as distractions to force the heroes off me and save people. The reason I'm placing many bombs is that as an organized crime lord, I would have had places in my city that I was ready to blow up to cause problems for the heroes to pull attention away from my operations. I decided to place bombs at the electrical plant and water plant. Due to the fact that I'm a villain, I can steal the supplies I need if I run out. Heroes are meant to be upstanding citizens. As such, they would need to break their morals and steal if they don't have enough money. Though if I don't get rid of Yeoi Rosu then the electrical and water plant won't matter, since they can get her to build generators and other supplies like money. I was done placing my bombs around the city. I placed bombs in quite a few places and was ready to cause trouble if I needed to. The rest of the first day was spent getting similar to the place and talking to other students. It seems that a few hours ago Yue had let the robot citizens in the city and had Yue students from other courses enter the city who were getting extra credit if they joined as citizens, reporters, or other things. I decided to get in my business clothing and meet up with some of the students. I also needed to visit the fake business that I had set up with some of the students. It was called Green Valley Stock Exchange. I'm just glad Yue provided me a GPS device with the live students' locations, so I don't set a bomb off when one of them close enough to get hurt. Though the hero course students are free game in my bombs. I was asked just not to actually kill them with those bombs thought, so I have to employ some safety. Teachers Pav. All of the staff was a bit tense after Izuku entered the city zone. They all wanted to know what video Izuku was talking about and what All Might did. But they decided to wait to see the video, since Izuku said he would play it during the event. Nezu was a bit concerned since Izuku was planning to go deep in the villain roleplay. Nezu had some ideas about what happened on set rooftop, since Izuku is corkless, but he is hoping he was wrong, since Phil and Midoriya that is going to be shown could have been a large possibility. With the information that Nezu has seen in the notebooks, Izuku was a threat if he ever becomes a villain in reality even without Ofa, since he could have other villains kill the heroes without him doing anything. All Might. I know we will need to wait for the video. However, if my theory is right then I want you to know how close we were to Midoriya taking the other two options he had opened to him that day. I believe you know what those options are. Nezu asked. Yes. I painfully know. That is why I will always be at his side no matter what. Especially after this since I will need to pull him back once we are done with this event. All Might said. This just sent alarm bells off in everyone else's mind since they didn't know what was going to happen. They thought this was going to be over on the first day because Izuku was by himself. However, based on Nezu and All Might conversation, it didn't appear it would end the first day, but take the entire time. The staff watched the camera and saw what Izuku was doing. He was scouting the entire city out. He then made it to his base, and the other staff were shocked. Nezu are those live explosives Vlad King asked. Why yes, they are. How good of you to notice. Nezu responded in his cheery tone. The staff went ballistic. They were all wondering why he had guns and explosives. He requested it and went through the needed training to get certified by Snipe. He is 100% able to handle those weapons. As such, I can say this year's event will be very bloody on the hero side. Nezu said with a grin on his face. The staff then watched Izuku separate some of the supply into different locations, which they thought was smart of him in the event his main base is lost. They also saw him place the explosives across several places in the city. How did he know the HQ of the heroes? asked Midnight. Not that hard to figure it out. It's the only place being renovated and is big enough for a hero team the size of the two classes. So it was only a matter of time that he figured it out. Also, villains generally know the locations of the HQs anyway. All Might said. Nezu was just watching every single movement that Izuku did. Nezu wanted to imprint this entire event in his mind because of what Izuku has shown in the few meetings this past week. Eraserhead was just confused about what he has missed about his student that All Might and Nezu has noticed. Soon all the staff saw the day starting to come to an end, and Izuku decided to start talking it up with the students that are getting extra credit in this event, by playing as reporters and some other jobs. They all saw him in a new outfit and were surprised about it, since it was the first time seeing him in such clothing. Izuku looked like some leader of a business or in this case a villain organization. Time skip, day 2 of villain preparation. Third path. Izuku had talked to the other students in the event area last night, and today he would visit his business today and explore other shops that had been set up with robots running them. Due to the fact that Izuku had a business, he also had a credit card with fake money attached to it, so he could buy things legally and get fake cash inside the city. 
This confused the staff on why he had a fake business, but figured it out quickly, since organized crime empires had legit businesses that they ran to get clean money. They thought Izuku was smart by going this route, since if he ran out of supplies he would never be caught stealing for food or water. As Izuku spent most of the day just wandering the town and getting clues on where he wants to stage operations. The staff for the most part were just getting ready for the first day of fighting. Izuku knew that he would need to keep moving on most days, and needed to know good vantage points to take out heroes. He also knew that he needed to target certain heroes to make the exam go in his favor. These heroes were Yeoi Rozu, Hakir, Jiro, Shoji, Kurwaro for the most part. These people were top targets due to Yeoi Rozu's ability to create items and the other four, due to their recon and stealth abilities, which could get people on his trail. As such, they made his top target list if he gets a chance. Everyone else would present challenges in their own right, but Izuku wanted to get rid of anyone that could find him and follow him from a distance. Izuku has also noticed that there was a park out front of the hero's building, and had the fun idea of taunting the heroes. He knew Bakugo would likely try and arrest him right then and there attack him. However, without proof, they couldn't do anything. Soon the last day of his preparation came to an end. The bombs have been placed. Drop-off locations with supplies have been set up, and he had his initial first day plan ready. Izuku looked over the video footage from the drones for the last two days, and he found that the hero team only did light training as a team, but not enough to make both classes effective together. It's almost time for the heroes to arrive. Soon, the world shall know the fear of spite. Izuku whispered. Teacher Pav. Some of the staff questioned Izuku's use of the drones before the heroes entered the event, but Nezu said it was allowed since the rules said the game actually started on the first day of the training week. As such, Izuku was within his rights. The teachers were shocked since they didn't realize that the rule could be applied like that. Izuku was finding several loopholes and exploiting them already. The teachers' opinions started to change to the fact that this would take longer than one day. Eraser had had enough though and wanted to know what he was missing about his students. Nezu, you and all might know something that we are all missing. What is going to happen during this event and should we be worried? Eraser had asked which caused everyone to freeze since he asked such a question. Nezu looked at all might and then back to the other staff. Did any of you ever notice that Izuku acted weird during the start of the year? If you did, you should know that the Izuku you all know is a watered-down version that he has created to keep himself safe from us and his classmates. Now though, now if his classmates are safe from him. You need to know that none of the students in 1A and 1B will likely leave the event the same as they went in. Izuku is now free to do as he pleases, and they will suffer his wrath that he has kept locked away for over a decade. The video he will have broadcasted out of the TV station will explain a lot of why he needed to protect himself from us and why he is now lashing out in this event. Just know that All Might and I stand behind Izuku regardless of what he does in this event. It's time that the students learn that the hero doesn't always win and they can't save everyone. They have grown used to the threats like the love, but organized crime is making its return. Villains are getting smarter and this event will show the nasty reality of how unfair this world can be. Nezu said in a cold tone. This made the entire staff worried. Especially Vlad King and Eraserhead. It's almost time for the heroes to arrive. Soon, the world shall know the fear of spite. Izuku whispered. The staff froze at this. Why spite is his villain name? Is what everyone thought. Oh, how appropriate that name is, Nezu said which caused All Might to agree. Hound Dog, you might want to prepare yourself for a lot of sessions after this event. It will get disturbing. All Might said. This just made everyone in the staff room even more worried. What is Izuku planning? Is the thought they all had. Izuku woke up and made his way in his professional clothing to the location near the hero HQ, but far enough to be out of anyone's range of hearing or sight. Izuku just sat up on a building roof and waited for the heroes to arrive in the next hour. Time skip. Heroes Pav. All of the students from the two classes had gathered outside the city zone. They were surprised at the level of detail they could see over the wall blocking everyone in. Nezu was in front of everyone on a teacher's shoulder. Good day everyone. Today is the first day of the event. I want to remind you of some rules. You can't arrest anyone if you don't get evidence of a crime. You could detain them for 4 hours max to question them, but will need to release them at the end of the time, or you will be penalized. Also, remember you are expected to be upstanding citizens of this city. As such, act like you should if you were already full-fledged heroes. I hope you all know the laws of the city, and I wish you good luck. You have 5 days to capture the villain or else you lose. Nezu said. Oh I. What do you mean we can't arrest the damn Deku without proof? He's the only villain in the city therefore anything that happens is his fault, Bakugo yelled out. The staff was disappointed that Bakugo didn't read the rules. Bakugo, it was in the rule book I gave you. 
Not a problem if you didn't read them and tell everyone. Now, remember you can't harm anyone or arrest anyone without proof. You can only detain for a max of 4 hours before you have to let them go. Also, remember once again you have to follow the normal rules as a citizen, and it is your job to protect the citizens and keep them safe first. Capturing the villain is always secondary to the life of the citizens. Nezu said as he directed everyone on the bus to be transported to the hero's HQ. Some of the students were complaining to Bakugo about him not reading the rule book. He threw the rule book and them and told Lita to start reading which she did. The buses soon moved out, and it took about 15 minutes for them to arrive at the hero's HQ. They all got off the bus and were in front of the hero agency building. The building had five floors and enough living space for all of them. As the students looked at the building, they started to hear the noise around them. They all turned around and noticed that there were robots and real live people moving around the city. They could see reporters, police, taxi drivers. If you could name it, then there was a robot or a person doing it. When you all go pro in the real world you can live at an agency sometimes, but they will take a cut of your paycheck. So this is a lesson of living at your agency that you work for. The event has now started. Enter the agency and get to work because you are now on the clock. Snipe said as he got back on the bus and they drove off. Everyone soon snapped out of it at Bakugo's yelling and moved into the office. They spent about 30 minutes getting used to the place, and Bakugo had called everyone down, and had us split into teams, and wanted some of us to start patrolling. However, that was cut short when Shoji spoke up. Um, everyone. I hear Midwarrior outside. Shoji said. Everyone was shocked for a second and thought that he was coming to surrender. Oh I, where is he? Bakugo yelled. Shoji said he's across the street at the park. Izuku Pav. I saw the heroes enter their building. After about 10 minutes I decided to move to the park in front of their building and sat down at the table. I just started humming a song. Soon the heroes heard that I was outside. It was getting close to the first show. Let the show begin I whispered towards a camera for the staff to read my lips and hear me with the enhanced cameras they have going around the place. The Kugo came outside and they all came running over to me. Oi, you here to surrender villain. The Kugo yelled. I just put a confused look on my face. I'm sorry Mr. Hero, but I don't know what you mean. I'm just an upstanding citizen enjoying the park. There is no crime here that would make me a villain now is there. I sat while well looking at him with a small smile. Everyone was silent for a few moments. The Kugo had a few sparks going off in his hand and looked ready to just attack me. Teacher Pav. The staff was all sitting in the viewing room that had bathrooms and bedrooms connected with a kitchen as well. The staff was expected to stay here for the entire event. Soon the event started and Snipe pointed out that one drone picked Izuku up near the hero building. What is he doing? Mick asked. Soon they found out when the heroes came outside. But before the heroes arrived the staff heard, let the show begin. From Izuku. This confused everyone since he hasn't done much for the first day. Izuku did warn them that he was going to set a bomb off in an area of the city, and they approved it, but he hasn't yet. The staff watched the heroes talk to Izuku, and Midnight pointed out that Bakugo might get arrested by a police robot if he strikes Izuku for no reason. Everyone agreed. It seems Izuku is taunting the heroes since they can't do anything to him without proof of a crime, Nezu said. Soon though before Bakugo could do anything the city was shaken by a large explosion. Dirt Pav. As Izuku sat down in front of everyone and listened to them question him on why he won't just give up since they know he is the villain and they would catch him soon doing something. They all got silence from a loud explosion that made the city shake. What the hell was that? Some of the students yelled out. Soon they could see fire and smoke coming from several blocks down. Looks like a villain attack. You heroes need to go to work it seems. It was nice meeting you all, but I should clear the area. I don't want to get caught in a villain attack. Izuku said as he started to walk away. Bakugo was pissed. Izuku had just bombed a part of the city while sitting right in front of them, and they had no proof. Everyone needs to go to the damn fire. Deku. I will catch you soon. Bakugo yelled. Izuku turned around and said, I don't know what you're talking about. Though just a warning. The villain in this town does have a grudge. The story is that he loathes heroes because of his past. As such, I suggest being careful hero. Izuku then walked away. Hero Pav. Everyone had arrived at the side of the fire. It was devastating. There was rubble spread across the city, and the building was ablaze. Five robots and police had arrived and were trying to put the building out and rescue people. Did Izuku really blow the building up? Asked a lot of the 1A and 1B students that were closer to Izuku. The Kugo had arrived and started to tell everyone to put the fire out. Todoroki created some ice and had Kendo hold the ice as he melted it, so she could throw it onto the building. Other hero students were working on pulling people out of the building. 
Some of them were freaking out because the robots were screaming like Creole people, which made it hard to work, since they weren't used to seeing a site like this. Soon the work of putting the fire out was going well when the building collapsed into itself. The hero students didn't know what to do. The fire chief robot came up and said that the heroes could leave since anyone left inside was dead, and they would be pulling bodies out for roughly a few days, as they worked their way through the building remains. Soon the entire hero team made it back to the hero agency and were all in silence. Why did he blow that building up? What was the purpose of it? Asked Ashido from 1A. Everyone was wondering the same thing. Soon though there was a knock on the door, and they had found a package. What the hell is in the package? Todoroki asked. No one could hear anything coming from the box as such. The Kugo opened it and saw a CD in the box with Play Me written on it. What the hell is this? The Kugo said. He handed it to Kendo who was near the TV, and had her put it on the TV to play. Soon the video started and displayed a masked figure. Hello heroes. The figure stated. Some of them were talking about how Midoriya changed his looks, so that they couldn't outright arrest him, which was smart everyone thought. Soon everyone waited. My name is Spite and I welcome you all to my city, but we'll have to ask you all to leave or die. Though I doubt all of you heroes will do that. As such, I will have to remove you all permanently. Now, I wonder how many of you ever wondered why villains became villains. For those that wonder why I became the leader of the Fallen Hearts villain group, I would like to tell you all a story of how I fell into my spot as a villain. I promise you this story holds truth within and the events did happen. As such, let me tell you why I loathe heroes so much. It's because they are nothing but fakes and frauds. Let us start with how I grew up. Did you know that 20% of the world is corkless, Spite stated. This caught everyone off guard since Suzuku wasn't corkless, but Bakugo froze. Is he going to Bakugo thought. You're all wondering why would I bring that fact up. I do have a quirk after all but the truth is I didn't always. I am one of the world's oldest cases of being a late bloomer. This means that I didn't receive my quirk until I was around 14. Though that isn't the reason I became a villain. No. 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 The reason is because of how the world treats the quirkless people and how disgusting heroes are. At the age of 4, I was diagnosed as quirkless. It was at this point I learned that the world isn't fair, and that everyone is born unequal. From the age of 4, my mother wasn't that really supportive and treated me like glass. Shows a picture of young Izuku being hugged by Inko and her saying sorry. When my classmates learned of me being quirkless they soon turned on me. So did my best friend who I saw as a brother. Think of the scene where Bakugo is beating Izuku up on the ground when he is defending a kid. Soon my name was forgotten, and it was replaced with a derogatory term that everyone would use to call me. As such, I had no choice but to respond to it even as I got into my teens. At first, the bully was only name calling and some light physical attacks with quirks. But soon it turned to much much worse. The teachers would join in on the taunting and name calling. Teachers would ignore my cries for help when students would use their quirk on me even in front of them. I would go home bloody and bruised every single day, and nothing was ever done about it. This happened for an entire decade. I was beaten and abused mentally and physically forever. However, it only got worse. Soon, my former best friend who turned my bully, decided to take it up a knock. No one had decided to break this threshold until him. It was the day we were meant to give our career applications in on where we wanted to go in the future. The teacher talked to us and said something about everyone wanting to be heroes which caused everyone to use their quirks. Soon though the teacher decided to let everyone know what I wanted to do. It was always my dream to be a hero everyone laughed at me, and my main bully used his quirk on my desk. Well the teacher just stood by doing nothing like normal. Everyone always told me that as a quirkless person I could never be a hero, and that day would be the day I broke. My former best friend turned to bully stopped me from leaving class that day. He and his little followers had some advice for me now, what was it? Ah yes. If you want to be a hero so badly, how about you take a swan dive off the roof and pray for a quirk in my next life? He said. Now I wasn't planning to do it, but still, he had opened the threshold for telling me to suicide baiting. Since he had never done it the other students who took his lead never did it either. My bully decided to take the hero journal that I had notes on heroes in and destroyed it, and threw it out the window into a car pond. The bully and his followers walked away. Show's end of the middle school day where Bakugo did all this. I went on my way home that day and decided to take a long way since I didn't want to go home yet. Soon I came under an underpass and my life flashed before my eyes, since a villain attacked me and nearly killed me. It was a sludge villain. Soon though I saved. I was saved by the number one hero All Might. I looked up to this person and wanted to ask him the question. Surely he would tell me I could be a hero. He was a hero that inspires everyone and said anyone could be a hero after all. However, the reality was different. 
After being saved I had did a dumb move and grabbed onto All Might, since I wanted to ask the question. Soon we would arrive on a rooftop where I would ask All Might the question. Can I be a hero even though I'm corkless? Do you know his answer? Let me tell you. Show rooftop scene, no young man. I cannot simply say that you can be a hero even without power. If you want to help others, then you could also become a police officer. But you also have to consider what's realistic young man. All Might said to me. Did you know as a quickless person, people cannot get really any jobs. The quickless unemployment rate is 95%, I don't know if this is true. As such, it would have been impossible to really do anything else. Even to be a police officer you must have a quirk. Job applications require disclosure of the quirk, which means people would never give me a job. Soon I would walk down that roof with my dreams crushed. I would hear an explosion off to another part of the city, but I somehow end up there via my feet, even though I didn't plan to. I would find heroes standing around not saving a kid. The kid would turn out to be my childhood friend turned the main bully. Ironic isn't it? Though I still had a heart at this time and for some reason, my body was moving on its own to try and save my bully. I would cause a small distraction that would give my bully a few moments of air, and then All Might shows up to save the day. At the end of this, the heroes on site would scold me and ask me what I was doing. They even asked if I was crazy since they found out I was corkless. They did this while praising my bully who only made the situation worse, by having his quirk go off and causing the fires on the buildings nearby. They told him he would be an amazing hero and all that. I soon escaped from the side and walked home. Now in some other reality, I might have been stopped on my way home by All Might a second time where he would tell me he was wrong, and he offers to help train me where we would discover that I did have a quirk that required me to gain a lot of muscle. But in this slightly different reality, I would make it home without anyone stopping me. I made it home and sat in my room where I had all my hero merchandise of All Might. I would look around and see his smile. It was in these moments that my broken dreams turned into a raging fire of hatred. I came to hate that damn smile and all the other heroes from the sludge villain attack who just stood by. I helped my bully, my tormentor, when they stood around and did nothing. I couldn't take it anymore. The false heroes, the fact that my bully, my tormentor for a decade was praised as a good hero candidate. If he was such a good hero then I didn't want to be a hero anymore with all the fakes. With all the lies that people like all might spout on the TV. As such, I became Spike the villain. I lead many heroes to their death. Now, it's your turn heroes. Will you leave this city or will you die at my hands like all the other heroes? Make your decision. Oh by the way this video has been played across the entire city for the citizens to see. The truth of the hero society is now out there. Teacher Pov. It was stunned silence. No one knew what to say. You could hear a pin drop if someone dropped one. Then All Might spoke up. It's scary how close Spite almost became a reality, isn't it he said. This made everyone unfreeze and look at him. All Might had just he just are you telling me that the video we just saw is true. Eraser had spoke out and yelled the last part. Even Nezu was looking at All Might because he didn't know about the rooftop meeting. Nezu knew that the kid was involved in the sludge villain, but not the rooftop. All Might had informed Nezu about Izuku's past when Izuku told All Might, but hearing it from Izuku was much worse. All Might looked over to Nezu and then the rest of the staff who were all staring at him. Yes. I learned about the suicide baiting fact and bullying a few days ago. Also, the rooftop did happen. Though in this reality, I did meet Izuku a second time. I took him on for training where we discovered his quirk. He became my protege. That is why I was already close to Izuku before Yue. I knew him 10 months before the Yue exams. All Might said. Everyone was stunned. The rooftop, the bullying wait the bullying. That means Bakugo is Izuku's bully. We forced Izuku to team up with his bully who has tried to kill him at the start of the year and has more or less kept bullying him here at UA. We've watched it happen and did nothing. We're no better than the previous teachers of Izuku's. Mick said. This caused all the staff to be worried even more. All Might, I know you were able to get Izuku in my office a few times before this event, but I want him in my office at the end of this event or the day after to try to mitigate any damage this event will cause him. Hound Dog said. All Might said he would ensure Izuku was in the meetings, since Izuku has been allowing him to join. All Might has been a better supporting pillar for his protege, since he now knows the full truth of Izuku's past. The other teachers still didn't know how to react, and were feeling guilty of not stopping Bakugo when he used his quirk. Nezu, we got to do something about Bakugo now that we know the truth. We can't let them stay near each other, and I don't know if I can keep teaching Bakugo now that I know the truth. Eraser had said. Nezu just looked at him and turned back. We will deal with it in the end. He has improved a bit, but I agree they can't stay near each other. Though that might not be a problem at the end of this event. 
We don't know if Izuku plans to stay at Yue at the end of this. He plans to do a lot of damage in this event, and we don't know how the other students will react to Izuku. As such, Izuku may be transferring out, Nezu said. This news shocked the teachers since they didn't want Izuku leaving. Also, Nezu said something about Izuku causing a lot of damage. What do you mean about damage? Vlad King asked. The students are not used to enemies that know them and can defeat them all. Izuku is going to be ruthless in his attacks, and how he goes about getting rid of all of the hero team. He will not be clean about it. As such, the students might not like Izuku at the end of this, and may outcast him. That is why we might have Izuku transfer to a different school where I would go teach to ensure I can help him. I teach here at UA because Izuku is a student here. At first, we didn't know if he would make it in, but he did so it all worked out. All Might said. The teachers were dumbfounded once again. All Might was teaching here because his protege was here, and All Might had that much faith in Izuku passing the exams with a newly activated quirk. Hero students pov. The students don't know how to react. Everyone was in stunned silence just like the teachers were. Bakugo was frozen. His entire past actions were thrown out into the open by a simple video, and it was also shown outside to all of the other students. This also meant that the teachers have seen the video, since they can see everything in the city. Soon the hero student son froze and everyone looked at him. Was that video true? Did you really do all of that? Asked Yuraka. Everyone wanted to know. However, Bakugo being Bakugo told everyone it was none of their business. It's our business. You shouldn't even be in a hero school with the stuff you've done. Stated Jiro. Everyone was yelling at Bakugo. Hiroshima attempted to defend his friend a bit saying, We don't even have confirmation of the video being true. Look, Spite even claimed something large about All Might himself. How can we believe such bold claims? Also, if he really did what Spite said then how is he in a hero school? Yue would have found out about it. We need to focus on capturing Spite and we can end this game. Remember this is a game to win, and Spite is winning by dividing us. Hiroshima said. Soon everyone calmed down a bit, but the distrust was put in place already. The trust in the group has now been fractured and wouldn't be repaired so easily. People still wanted to know if it was true, but they had spent one hour arguing over it already and got nowhere. We need to do patrols for Spite. We need to find him and end this soon. Everyone split into teams and set out on patrol. Half of us will stay here and guard the base, while the other half will go out and patrol the city. The cougar yelled out. He didn't even break people into any teams really as people just broke off into groups and they left. One team had three people in it. This team was made up of Shoji, Koda, and Sato. They decided to patrol the north side of the city. What they didn't know is that Spite still had his drones following them the entire time. Izuka Pav. Well I'm disappointed in the students' reactions. I thought I could make them all break apart in that one go. But they still maintained some form of leadership. I guess I will get moving and aim to kill some heroes. As I got dressed in my villain outfit, I noticed on the drones that Shoji, Koda, and Sado were all heading towards the part of the city where I am at. The nearest team that is out on patrol is currently 5 plus minutes away from them. Shoji is one of my first targets to kill as well. After about 5 minutes I got changed and geared up. I have two guns on me with ammo since I don't want them knowing about my other explosives currently or my grenades or my sniper. Once I get the long range hearing people out the sniper will be far more useful. I moved onto the current path of the three heroes and waited. About three minutes later they got close to my location until Shoji stopped them. They pointed in my direction and I knew he found me. They approached slowly to make sure it wasn't just a random student that is in this event. As they got closer I powered up Ofa at 25% and jumped out. Hello, heroes. Please die for me. I said as I pulled the trigger and landed a hit on Koda's chest right above the heart. Sato then radios in the fact that I was here and requested backup. Currently, the closest hero is 8 minutes out. I quickly pocketed my gun and charged Shoji and threw him into the building causing it to fall and him landing inside the building. Civilian robots start to run away from the site as I then turn to Sato as he just finished charging up. We both landed punches against each other fists, but I swept across the ground with my foot knocking him down. I heard Shoji getting up and I turned around and charged him. I got behind him and pulled the kill knife that makes red marks across people and made a mark across his throat killing him. Both him and Koda couldn't move anymore since Snipe came across their earpieces and told them that they had died. Sato was starting to get up, but I made my way over to him quickly. I told All Might and Nezu I would use physiological torture, and I planned to hold through to that. I kicked Sato's leg out from him again, since I powered up to 30%, and bounded his arms with some rope I had. I soon bounded his feet as well. Sorry hero, but I need to send a message to the others. So you won't die just this moment. 
I said in a cold tone which made him pale a bit. I grabbed some more rope and tied him to a pole. I had him hanging up by his feet in the air with his head towards the ground. I then moved away into an alley and waited for their support to show up. According to the drones, the closest hero team that would arrive would be Ajiro, Mineta, and Kaminari. None of them could catch up to me after this, so I was safe. Four minutes later with the next team being three minutes away came Ajiro, Mineta, and Kaminari. They saw the scene that I left them and froze. They noticed that Sato was still in the game but was hanging from the rope. Kaminari moved to untie him, but Sato yelled that it was a trap. Well, he's not wrong. I thought. I came on the roof edge and Sato yelled out my position. I had already pulled my gun and took my shot after Sato yelled. I landed several hits directly to Sato's chest which would not come out of the game. I knew this because whenever I killed someone, Snipe would also confirm it for me as well. All three of the new arrivals just screamed since I had shot Sato right in front of them. I turned around and ran off in a direction that had a clear opening according to my drones. Ajiro attempted to give chase, but I was too fast with Ofa, and I got away. Hero students pov. After Spite had left the site, the other team had arrived and more heroes arrived. They saw that three of their teammates had already died soon ectoplasm clones arrived to escort them off the site, and press students were all screaming at the hero students asking what happened, and how could the heroes get killed by one killer. What are you heroes doing? This villain has bombed a building killing hundreds of civilians, and now you heroes are dying as well. Are we safe in this city yelled one reporter. The police robots were trying to keep everyone back. The Kugo soon arrived and he was pissed. Everyone was trying to get an answer out of the second team that arrived, but they were stunned silent. Then Mineta started to speak. Spite he. We received the backup request and we came. We found Shoji and Koda already dead, but Sato was he was tied to the pole by his feet, Kaminari moved to get him down since he was still in the game, but he yelled out it was a trap. We were too late as Spite appeared on the roof behind us he he shot Sato right in front of us, and then ran off. We had to watch Sato get shot and killed off, Mineta said while pale. Fuck. Damn it, Deku. The cougar yelled out. Soon ectoplasm clones arrived and took the killed students away from the city. The cougar told everyone to get ready to move back to the base. However, a taxi pulled up near them as they started to make their way down the road back to the agency. Did anyone call for a taxi? Mineta asked as he noticed the car. Everyone said they didn't and then boom the taxi exploded. It sent them all falling down on the ground. Some of the hero students were screaming as their hearing went silent due to the explosion being so close. What everyone didn't realize was that Kawaro and Mineta were both closer to the car which explosives had painted them. This caused them to be painted red. What happened? People were saying as they all got their bearings. Mineta. Kororio. They got hit by the bomb in the taxi. Yelled out Kendo. Everyone looked over and saw they had a large amount of red on them. Everyone froze thinking it was real blood. However, soon two ectoplasm clones arrived to get the two students. He told them that they were Kia due to the car bomb. Snipe couldn't tell them because their earpieces in Mineta and Kororio broke, but assured the students that the red wasn't blood, but paint in the bomb. The teacher took the two students away, leaving everyone stunned. Soon police and fire robots arrived to put the car fire out. Reporters gathered again and started yelling about how the heroes were failing and getting killed left and right. Everyone back to the damn base now before the damn Deku blows another bomb on us. The cougar yelled. He was pissed about the bombs. He already lost five members of his team on the first day. Everyone started to make their way back to the base, but didn't notice that spite was on the buildings above them. Most of the ranged hearing people were still suffering from the bomb as such, they couldn't alert everyone to him being there. Spite however had no plans to attack at that moment, and let the heroes return to their base. Teacher Pav. The teachers watched as Spite waited for the hero team to get close, because they had to confirm it was him, before calling it in due to the other students in the event. Then the teachers watched as Spite just destroyed the first team. They saw him take Koda out in the first shot and throw Shoji into a building. Ouch. Said some teachers. Then Spite fought Sato for a bit before finishing Shoji off when he got up with a knife to the throat. Damn, the kid moves quickly with his weapons. Snipe said. The other staff agreed since Spite was killing the heroes quickly and cleanly. He had already taken two students out when he decided to tie Sato to a pole upside down. Why is he doing that? Asked Power Loader. The other staff agreed since it didn't provide him any benefit. It's illogical of him to leave Sato alive, Eraser had said. No, it's not. Nezu countered. This made the staff confused. They started to ask why, but the other team arrived, and Sato yelled out it was a trap. Then they saw Spike kill Sato off in front of the other team and run away. Spite is using physiological torture in this event. He broke the trust in the hero leadership with the video. 
then he is attacking their minds and morale to fight, since they have to watch their teammates die in this event. Spite is being brutal and effective, Nezu said. The staff then understood. If they had to watch someone die right in front of them, their morale would weaken as well, since they would be focused on if they could have done something different and would start blaming themselves. Then Spite called in and told them that he was going to explode a taxi near the hero team. Snipe approved it, and Nezu made sure the car wouldn't get close enough to cause actual damage, but the pain would still hit if any student were enough close when Spite set it off. They watched the taxi bomb go off and saw that two students had been taken out. Snipe attempted to call them, but noticed their earpieces got destroyed and knocked out. He told Echoplasm to get his clones there quickly, and informed them that those two were out since he couldn't. They watched as the hero team made their way back to their base quicker, but also noticed Spite above them. They wondered if he would attack again, but he didn't. Soon Spite broke off and went back to his base. Everything was silent for the early day. The sun hasn't risen up yet either. However, evil does not come to an end just because it's an early time. As such, we can see Spite running across the buildings and getting ready for his next act. Nezu you there. Spite called over his comms to the teacher. Yes, we are here Izuku. What is it? Nezu asked. I'm blowing Sight D and E bombs. Approve please. Spite asked. Soon Nezu gave Spite the approval, and Spite set off the bombs. Hero's student Pav. The few students that were on watch during the early morning felt the city shake several times. For the love of God. Did Spite blow more buildings up? Ashida yelled. Jiro went and started to wake everyone up to get out on the sites of the explosions. Soon everyone was awake and in their outfits. Have two teams go to each side of the explosions and have teams patrolling the area around them to see if Spite is still in the area, Bakugo yelled out. Soon everyone was moving and the teams came upon more burning buildings. At one burning building, several students from class 1B arrived and started to work with the fire and police robots on reducing civilian robots at the fire. However, no one really had the quirks to help put the fire out and could only watch the fire burn. The students on site were Shishida, Shoda, Sunatori, Tsuburaba, Tetsutetsu, and Tokich. These students were just stuck outside for the most part and helping the robots as they had to listen to the robots inside scream for help. While they were working, they didn't realize that Spite had shown up and taken some of the civilian robots hostage. He had placed a bomb between them all. Hello, heroes. Don't call for backup or else I blow the civilians up. Yelled Spite. Every single hero student looked over and saw that Spite had a bomb with around a dozen civilians being held hostage. They didn't know what to do. If they attempted to move and go for him he would kill the robots that they were meant to save. What do you want Spite? Also, let the hostages go. Shishida yelled out. I'm willing to make a trade. Two heroes for all the hostages. I want them to come with me. Spite stated. This left the heroes dumbfounded. I will even allow you all to figure out who comes with me. So please choose quickly or else bye bye civilians, Spite yelled. Again the hero students didn't know what to do. Their hands were tied. They were whispering among each other and trying to figure out what to do since it appeared like a no-win situation. If they tried to reach for their communication devices to Cal for help the bomb would go off. If they attempted to reach for Spite, the bomb goes off. Soon though Tokage and Shota volunteered to go, since the others could have a chance to fight Spite in their opinion. Only if they knew how wrong they were. Tie the hands of Shota and Tokage up, and then you two step forward near me. Any other moves will mean the hostages die. Spite stated. Soon, their teammates tied their hands and they walked forward to Spite. However, they didn't know that Spite wasn't taking prisoners. The moment the two heroes got in front of Spite, he powered up his court to move fast and pulled his gun. Bang bang everyone froze. Sorry, I don't take prisoners. Spite said as he triggered the bomb killing the civilians. You only sacrifice two of your friends for nothing heroes. Spite said with venom in his voice as he charged the remaining heroes. Spite kept his gun out as he started to shoot at the heroes. He landed a shot on Sinatori in the chest, but got his gun knocked out of his hand by Tetsutetsu. Spite was left with Tetsutetsu, Tsuburaba, and Shishida to fight. Shishida called in for backup and told them that Spite was at their burning building. Spite knew the closest team was two minutes away, and he needed to work fast. So he grabbed Tetsutetsu's arm and threw him across the parking lot at Tsuburaba. The moment he did this he powered up to 40% of Ofa, and quickly appeared in front of Shishida who was surprised, since no one has seen Spite move that fast in training. Spite soon landed and ate Shishida's stomach and pulled out his knife and dragged it up the hero's spine. Snipe called over and called everyone one but Tetsutetsu, Subiraba out. Snipe also said that Shishida's wound wasn't straight away fatal, but would have left the hero paralyzed and bleeding out. Snipe said recovery girl is the one that called him out. 
This left Tatsutatsu and Subirabu. However, the backup was arriving in the distance, so Spike decided to fall back. The backup team consisted of Lida, Yuraka, and Asi. The moment they arrived they were shocked at the number of deaths. They saw that only Tetsutetsu and Subiraba were left and started to ask them what happened. The students from Wano were shocked at what their friend was doing. Spite was being brutal and ruthless. Soon other teams that were patrolling the area came in. The other teams stayed doing their patrol because of other building was still being worked on. Teacher Pav. Everyone was woken up by Nezu's sign Spite was making some moves in the early morning. Dang this kid is not laying off the hero team. 13 said as everyone watched the buildings burn. Soon though they were shocked at what Spite did. He just put them in a lose-lose situation. Regardless of what they do, they are going to end up with dead people. This right here is a lesson on you can't save everyone. 13 spoke again. 13 was proven right when two heroes gave themselves up for the hostages, and Spike killed the two heroes and the hostages. Brutal but a real possibility in life, Eraser had said. They watched Spike fight the remaining heroes as he took out another hero student. Call Shishida out snipe. The way Spike did the attack with his quirk on would have gone right through the spine and destroyed too much. In real life, he would be paralyzed and bleeding to death. If medical help arrived he could live but would never walk again, so he is out. Recovery girl stated. This made some of the teachers tense, since that would be more brutal on the minds of the teammates and the paralyzed hero. Spike kept fighting but pulled back when backup teams arrived. So Spike has already gone through 20% of the hero team already in a day and a quarter. Dear God. Ectoplasm said as his clones arrived on site to get the dead hero students. The other teachers agreed. They all realized their mistake regarding Izuku. He was a powerful and scary person to fight long-term battles against. No one was thinking that the hero team would win anymore. They all were betting on Spite to win it all. Izuku Pav. I had to leave before finishing off the teams which made me sad. I kind of wanted a full wipeout of that entire team, but oh well. However, what is this? As I was heading towards the other burning building I found another team. It was Ajiro, Kaminari, and Aoyama. I took a look at my drones and could see that everyone was still in their other areas. I decided I would take this team out since the closest team to them is 3 minutes out. Even if I don't get them all I'm wiping more heroes out. I soon started to slowly make my way closer to them. I decided to use a pain grenade on this in my gun. I pulled the trigger on the grenade and rolled it over to them with some mofa behind my roll to make sure it gets there. I got out in the open as the grenade rolled slowly near them and yelled for them. Hey heroes. Looking for me. I said as stood in the road right as the grenade made it to them. Aoyama looked down and yelled grenade, but it was too late. It had gone off and Snipe called Aoyama and Kaminari out. Ajiro was still in which made me rush towards him and fight close combat against him to prevent him from calling for backup. The sound of the grenade might attract people, but they might confuse it with the sounds from the fire, so I needed to hurry. After about 5 minutes of hand-to-hand -hand combat, I knocked Ajiro down on the ground and used a rope to tie his feet quickly, because of my speed with Ofa. Now. Now hero. Don't move or you die straight away. Roll onto your back and put your hands behind your back. I stated. He gritted his teeth and complied. I decided to use Ajiro as a trap and try to get other heroes. I am glad I had some duct tape and a lot of rope requested in my supplies. I pulled some duct tape out and taped Ajiro's mouth closed. I pulled Ajiro by his tail towards an intersection that a team should come across. When I got there with Ajiro dragged behind me, I tied him up against a pole on the corner of the street. I also rigged a grenade above Ajiro that the moment they try to release him, I can set it off by a wire that I have in my hand since in an alley off across the street from Ajiro's position. I've made cuts across Ajiro's body which will cause him to bleed to death if he doesn't receive medical care in the hero's base soon. As such, I kill him regardless if heroes don't come. Now I just need to wait. I can see that my drones are following a team that is coming here. The students that are coming are Jiro, Hagaker, and Yeoi Rosu. The problem is going to be is Jiro going to locate me. I will need to control my breathing and hold my breath when they start getting closer. One minute away I start holding my breath and controlling my breathing in hopes that Jiro doesn't pick up my heartbeat as I slow it down. The three of them are here and have spotted a Jiro and start moving over. They look at the top of the building to see if they can spot me, but I am in the alleyway this time around instead of the roofs. Hagaker takes her clothes off and moves to untie Ajiro. I can't see her through my eyes, but the drone has heat vision which picks her up right next to Ajiro and under the grenade. I pull the pin and a few seconds later after she takes the tapes off Ajiro's mouth and he screams that it's a trap, the grenade goes off painting both of them with snipe calling them both out as dead. I then power Ofa up and rush Jiro to take her out. Shit he's here on yes. Jiro calls through her comms. 
However, I'm already on her and lands a kick at 10% which sends her into a building shop. I then pull my gun and start shooting at Yeoi Rozu who makes a riot shield to block the bullets. I just start moving towards her as I shoot and then power off up to 40% and kick the ground which causes it to break. This causes her to fall back and reveal she had a taser. However, as she falls back I land several shots on her which makes her drop the shield and taser. I move up quickly to her and bash the riot shield against her head knocking her out. Snap then calls her out since she fell unconscious. I quickly look at my drones and see the next team will arrive in one minute. I quickly arrive in front of Jiro as she stumbles out of the shop and I take my knife in my hand to her throat. Move and you die, I said in a cold tone as I grab the earphone jacks that she uses for her quirk, which is a bit painful to her. The team arriving is the one I've been avoiding for a while. It's Bakugo, Kirishima, and Siro. Hello, hero leader. Quite a show. You have been losing hero after hero to me. Now, what are you going to do with one of your people in my hands? Do you risk her life or let me go? I said to Bakugo as he arrived. His team and he look around and see the deaths. They also see Ajiro who belongs to a team that hasn't called in which confirms that Ajiro's team has been wiped out. Holding a hostage is unmanly bro. Hiroshima said. Bakugo just looked at me pissed since I've been taking his team out. Siro is trying to look for an opening to grab Jiro, but the knife prevents that. Deku how about you let her go and you and I fight this out here so I can show you your place. Bakugo snarls out. Oh show my place. Like how I was shown my place in that video of mine. I was always told I couldn't be a hero. So here is the result, I decided to destroy everything that you heroes hold dear. I said with venom coming off my voice. Siro and Kirishima looked a bit shocked that I brought the video up. Wait that video was real, Siro asked. Yup, I responded. This made both Siro and Kirishima look at Bakugo in disbelief. Bakugo just yelled for them to focus on the threat in front of them, which made them look back at me. Bakugo got impatient though, and took a step forward which resulted in me powering Ofa up to 40% and cutting Jiro's neck and throwing her at Bakugo to stop him from coming after me. I then jumped on the roofs and ran away. I made a mad dash out of there faster than Bakugo could keep up with since he hasn't seen my new speed. Snipe soon called over and called Jiro out. It seems that Bakugo had caught Jiro but didn't apply pressure which caused Jiro to be called out since Snipe didn't do it right away. The staff wanted to give him a chance to save her but he didn't. Teacher Pav. The teachers were shocked beyond belief. It was now only hitting nighttime Mad Spite had worked his way through about 64% of the damn hero team. Overall, if this was a real life mission, it would be considered an absolute failure due to the high death count on the hero side. He is smart in his traps and efficient. Snipe stated. Indeed and he is using physiological torture as best as he can. He shocks his enemies into not moving due to traps that he lays or tricks he uses. He made the first team at the fire shocked enough that he was able to get up and close and deal the damage when he killed the hostages and the first two heroes. Midnight stated. Overall, Spite was effective and brutal in his methods and was teaching a lesson really at every single turn. Never trust the villain to go through with his word. Never trust the fact that there doesn't appear to be a trap. Always check for traps everywhere. Don't let overpowered villains get close to you when you can't physically overwhelm them. So many lessons these students are being taught, but will they realize at the end the lessons that they are meant to learn or will they push Izuku to the side? It seems Spite is going to rest for a bit of time. Do you think he will ever hit the hero building with those bombs he placed? Asked Mick. This made everyone think for a bit, and Eraser had spoke up. He will likely use them tonight or tomorrow. He has taken out the long-range scouts and anyone that can replace their supplies. Meaning it's the perfect time to blow the hero team's supplies and facilities. He stated. This made everyone agree since the hero team would be forced to start taking supplies from stores or starve to death. Hero Team Pov. All of the heroes made it back to the base and found out about all the deaths that happened today. They were shocked that out of 39 hero team members only 25 were left. How do we beat him? He keeps hitting us on the patrol routes or setting off bombs that force us to respond where he can attack us. Kendo said. The class 1B students wanted to know if class 1 knew of a way to beat Spite since he was their classmate. Soon it was decided that they would move in two large groups of eight people, with the remaining people staying at the base keeping a watch out. However, that would start the next day since everyone needs to sleep. Time skip. It was now about 8pm, and there were no sounds from Spite. Everyone thought he was resting for the day since he attacked so early in the day. However, they were wrong. As people started to get ready for bed, the hero building started to shake as loud booms went off. Did he bomb out hero building? Is what everyone thought. 
Soon everyone went around looking to see what happened, and discovered that their food room was destroyed, and so was the room that contained the water system to feed the building. He took out our food and water, we only have enough left from visual looking for two more days. On the last day, we will have to go without food, but that doesn't solve the water problem, stated Kadai. Everyone was pissed that their supplies and water system has been taken out. They also didn't have Yeoi Rozu who could help them in this situation. Then some realized that Spide had targeted the long-range scouting people and Yeoi Rozu for this purpose. The long-range people can't tell them where he is anymore, and Yeoi Rozu can't fix this problem. Suddenly the cameras pick someone up outside across the street in the park. It was Izuku. Izuku Pav. I decided to take a walk in the park, since the heroes still had no direct evidence that connected me to the crimes. I was walking around in the park when I noticed the heroes coming outside the building over to the park. Deku you piece of shit. I will kill you. Yelled Bakugo. Calm down. I've done nothing wrong. I stated. Everyone just looked at me pissed which almost made me laugh. We know it was you. You're the only one that can pull this off, and your quirk is similar to the villain Spites, which gives us enough proof to at least hold you for the four hours, stated Kendo. Actually, my quirk is called Black Whip. Shows them a fake ID for the city it has been reported in the news that the villain has some form of strength enhancement quirk, so I don't know why you are comparing me to the villain, since we have different quirks. I stated. Everyone looked at me shocked that I went so far as creating a fake ID for this event. As such, I will be leaving now. Have a good night heroes. I said as I walked away towards the Green Valley Stock Exchange with the hero team following me. They saw me enter the building and started to assume that it was where I was running my villain lair out of. The heroes enter and looked around and saw me sitting at a desk. Welcome to Green Valley Stock Exchange. How can I help you, heroes? I said with a smile on my face. Everyone just looked at me and were asking different questions. This is alleged business. Unless you have a warrant, I need to ask you to leave since you are distributing my business. Thank you. I said as I guided them out the door and locked it behind them. The facial expressions that they had were funny as hell. I just went back to my desk and could see the heroes outside. I assumed they were waiting for me to leave, but I had set up a living area on the upper floors in an event like this. All I will have to do is trigger one of the bombs tomorrow to force them away. Teacher Pav. Nizu was laughing like crazy. Did he really make a fake ID for this? How did he make a fake ID? I've zoomed in and looked at it, and it appears real. Cementus stated. Nezu was still laughing and just laughed harder when Izuku had escorted the hero team out the front door. It was priceless to see the faces that the hero team made since they couldn't touch Izuku. It just shows you even though you know who the villain is you can't touch them if you don't get proof of their crimes. That's a bit problem with organized crime. You could know who the leader is, but are unable to touch them due to no proof or not enough proof. All Might said. The teachers were enjoying the faces that the hero team made. I wonder if they realize that he is going to sleep in that building. Asked Mick. Everyone just said no since it was doubtful. It turned out Izuku did sleep the night there, and the heroes wasted some of their time before heading back to their HQ to try and sleep. Though it was hard since no one could take showers, and they had to be careful with their eating to ensure they survived as long as possible. Izuku Pav. I am now on the third day. I need to take out more of the students since I will only have two days after this day. I knew they were planning to break off into groups of eight and patrol which made things a bit tricky. As such, I've decided to go with the sniper route since I've taken the scouts out. Ideally, I want to get Todoroki and Bakugo out of the event since they are my main threats. As such, I took my sniper with me and went and staked out a long strip of road that gave me a clear view of the road. I just needed to wait for the heroes to come out on patrol. I didn't want to use the few bombs I had already planted that I had left. I need them to draw the heroes out later when they won't come out. Soon two hours passed and the heroes have started to set off. One team was Asi, Ashido, Lita, Yurarka, Shiazaki, Yanagi, Rin, and Bondo. The second team was Tetsutetsu, Kirishima, Bakugo, Siro, Manama, Subiraba, Heninki, and Fukudashi. The third team was Kendo, Kadai, Kamakiri, Kabara, Awase, Tokoyami, Todoroki, and Kamori. The second team with Bakugo was going down the road I was watching. Soon I will get Bakugo out, and leadership should crumble and cause some infighting. Hero Team Pav. The hero students all separated into teams, and the second and first teams went outside to patrol. They didn't understand the slaughter that they were about to walk into that day. About 15 minutes into the patrol the loud bangs started to go off. Everyone was confused for a second before people started to scream. Bang bang the sounds kept going off as each person started to drop to the ground. The first person to drop was Bakugo followed by Kirishima and Tetsutetsu. 
After they fell the rest of the team started to move around and try to hide. Bang Bang Fukudashi took a hit to the chest, and Subiraba took one to their side. Everyone had gotten into cover. Soon Ectopalsum clones arrived and said Bakugo, Hiroshima, Tetsutetsu, and Fukudashi were all dead. Bakugo was pissed. He wanted to charge, but Ectopalsum held him by the arm, and warned him any action would result in punishment. Bakugo just screamed as he was lead off about bullshit deaths. The other teams were notified of a sniper in our areas, and who was killed. The other teams started to head towards them to support the first team and could hear the gunfire. As the other teams were coming up Spike took aim and took started to shoot people. Spike didn't land any of the shots and decided to retreat as the gunshots came to an end. Teacher Pav. When did Spike get a dang sniper? Yelled out Lad King. Some of the teachers were wondering the same thing as they heard the sniper shots went off. They saw Bakugo and a few others get taken out. Well, the hero leader went down. Now I wonder who will take control since Bakugo never planned for his defeat. Nezu said. Some of the teachers were annoyed that the hero team never did any planning for this event, since they thought it would end on the first day. Oh how wrong they were and now they were paying for it. Izuka Pav. I decided to fall back from the sniper post and reposition. I've taken Bakugo out and want to get ready for more direct combat. I think I also want to create a bit more chaos. I decided to use Ofa and break some buildings done. Smash I yelled out as I knocked about 5 buildings down, which resulted in all the civilian robots being crushed in the rubble. I could hear the hero team coming towards the newly destroyed buildings. I wanted to wait and show myself to them for a bit. Ah, hello heroes. I've killed a lot of you off, haven't I? There were only 20 heroes left and you all entered with 39. Oh, what fun. I will purge this world of you fake heroes. I yelled out. We will stop you, villain. Yelled Lita who had a pissed expression. I think it's because of the whole fake hero stuff I've been yelling which is relating to the hero killer ideals. Oh, how so hero? I've slaughtered so many of you heroes, and none of you have been able to stop me so far. What makes you think that you can do it? I asked. I just started to laugh a maniacal laugh as they all stared at me. I don't really want to kill all of them right now, but let make some chaos. I thought. I decided to charge Ofa up to 35% and charged into the heroes. I grabbed Bondo and threw him into Monoma. I then kicked the ground and broke the ground. Once the ground came up I punched the rubble and sent parts of the ground flying at the heroes hitting a lot of them. Lita, Yuraka, and Asuri attempted to capture me by having Yuraka touch me. The moment she came close I grabbed one of her hands and broke a finger on each hand. How will fight me now without your court now hero? I asked in a cold tone. I grabbed Yuraka and threw her at Lita, as Asui's tongue came towards me which I grabbed and used her tongue to swing her and slam her into the ground. This caused her to scream out in pain as Ishido came up to me. I just caused a punch of wind to happen and made her acid fly back at her which burned her a bit but didn't do much damage. I dashed up to her and kneed her in the stomach and took my knife and ran it across her throat killing her. Hero Team Pav. Everyone was trying to fight Spite but couldn't get any damage into him. Todorki even got punched back several times and couldn't use his fire since everyone else was around. As some of the 1B students attempted to capture Spite, he decided to kick the ground, causing a dust cloud in which he jumped away onto a building and ran away. He just slaughtered us. He killed Ashido as well, but he manhandled each of us and we couldn't do anything. Yelled out Kendo. Everyone was wondering how Spite was this strong, since he never showed any level of this strength in training. Soon everyone held each other limp back to the hero's HQ, to tend to their wounds and rest for a few hours before nightfall came. They all suspected that Spite would try to remove a few more of their members by night time, since there were only 19 hero students left now. Under half of the team that came in is left. No one was happy with the results. Even if they somehow win they still lose due to the number of deaths at the hand of one villain. Everyone got back to the base and started to relax. They all thought about how this event has turned out and had so much regret. They were also really scared of Spite currently since he was so ruthless in the deaths of their teammates so far. Has Spite always been like this? Thought all of the hero team members. Teacher Pav. Everyone was standing up from their chairs. When was he so good at fighting? Asked Eraserhead. He's always been holding back in class to a 25% limit. If he used too much in training he could really harm people. As you have seen he can wipe the floor with his peers quickly when he moves the percent of his cork up. I say he was running about 35%, while his current max is 50%. All Might said. All of the staff was even more shocked. It seems we will need to have Izuku start fighting second or third years to ensure that he is getting the proper training. Otherwise, we aren't doing our jobs correctly. Stated Midnight. Nezu agreed and made a note to have a staff meeting about it, if Izuku was staying at UA. 
Soon the day came to an end, and Izuku returned to his base to relax. Nezu, should I end this before the fifth day? Izuku asked over his communication device to the staff room. Izuku, if you want to. I think you could win any moment if you tried, but it's up to you. Nezu responded. I think I will take most of them out by the fourth day, and leave like one to two left for the fifth day for dramatic effect, Izuku said. Izuku Pav. I've let the heroes relax a bit at their base. I can also hear via the drones that they are seeing spite in myself as the same individual seems I will likely have to leave UA in the future. I knew this was a result that could happen. Might as well seal the deal then and do some mental games. I decided to get the supplies ready as I would sneak into the hero base and kill several of their members while they sleep. I've also discovered that Todoroki has assumed control barely due to his strength, which isn't the best way to get leadership. It might have proved a bit of trouble if Kendo had gotten leadership, since she could control all of the 1B students, and most of the 1A would have followed her easily. Oh well. It was past when they all normally went to sleep, and I saw only two people were awake. Kabara and Awais were the ones on night guard. I had arrived at the hero's base and went in through the roof. I soon broke my way into the base and slowly made my way downstairs. Awais was looking over the cameras on the streets, while Kabara was looking out the front windows outside. I made my way up to Awais with my knife, and quickly covered his mouth and ran the knife across his throat. Snap came over the comms and called him out. Kabara heard nothing. Soon I made my way away from him since I wanted to do some mental mind games. The fact that I could have killed him but didn't will be impactful. I decide to go into the bedrooms and kill some of the students sleeping. I soon arrived in Kamori's room where I placed my hand on her mouth waking her up, but it was too late for her. I had already sent my knife across her throat killing her. Snag came across her and my comms and called her out. She just looked at me with eyes of terror. I had gotten into their base and killed her. I saw Shiazaki was in this room also, but I decided to leave her alive. Again for mental mind games. I avoid the room with Tokoyami and Siro in it because of Dark Shadow. Dark Shadow would find me if I entered the room and alert them all. As such, I came upon the next room. This room had four people in it. It had Hananuki, Bondo, Manama, and Kamakiri. I quickly made my way to Manama and ran my knife across his neck. He woke up, but I had my hand on his mouth stopping him from speaking. We both heard Snipe call him out, and he looked terrified as well that I was able to get into their base without setting an alarm off. I then moved over in Kamakiri and repeated the process. They had to sit in the room in silence, since they weren't allowed to alert their alive teammates that they had gotten killed. After killing the two people in that room, I made my way to one more room before I was going to leave. I wanted to kill five people off tonight without being noticed. I entered the room with Kendo and Kadai in it. Kadai was awake and was reading a book in her bed, but hadn't noticed me come in since she had earphones in. I slowly made my way to her where I threw my hand on her mouth and ran the knife across her throat quickly before she could struggle too much and create noise. The moment the knife went across the neck snipe called her out and she stopped moving. It seemed she had the UA earpiece in the other ear. She turned her head at me, and I could see her face was pale. She was awake and didn't hear me which caused much more mental damage than getting killed in her sleep would have done. I just waved at her as I walked back out the door and headed to the roof to escape. Teacher Pav. The staff was waiting for Spike to make his move for the night, since he typically made a move during the day and then the night. However, we never expected this move. Did he? Soon Power Loader lit the heroes building alarms up and noticed that they had been hacked. He he hacked them at some point. Power Loader yelled out. This shocked even Nezu since he didn't see anything that would show that he was hacking. Wait. I know how he did it. It's the drones he had May make. They have hacking features according to the paperwork I got from May. Power Loader said. Spite is planning for almost everything, and it's showing compared to the hero team, Mick said. Everyone could agree. Soon the teachers had to watch as Spite went from one student to the next, and was killing a hero student left and right. Why is he leaving some alive when he could kill them? Asked Midnight. It's physiological torture. When they all notice the bodies in their rooms or near them, it will tell them that Spike could have killed them as well, but decide not to. That he took mercy on them and allowed them to live. As such, their lives are in his hand from that moment forward. Eraser had said. Correct assumption Eraser had. That is most likely what Spite is doing. It's also very good at destroying their will to fight, and not to just give up, since they aren't safe even in their own base. Nezu said. Soon they saw Spite arrive at Kadai's room with her wake. They watched as Spite jumped Kadai and soon killed her. That girl is going to have nightmares of that hound dog said. The rest of the teachers could agree as well. Hero Team Pav. About 30 minutes after Spite left the hero base Ectoplasm arrived and woke everyone up. He told Kabara that he was there to retrieve the dead which shot the student. 
ectoplasm pointed behind the student, and the student just screamed when he saw Waze dead. This woke everyone up which each caused a chain reaction of screams when people found their teammates dead in the same room as them. The hero base was in chaos. How did he get into the base? Was screamed Kendo who wanted to know how her roommate Kadai died. The heroes had to watch as their dead teammates were taken away by the teacher and could do nothing about it. The 15 hero students that remained no longer felt safe in their own base. After calming down a bit it was decided that they would be grouped up in a team of five to help ensure that if Spite came back then he would have to fight a large group. No one was to sleep alone or be up alone in a section of the base by themselves. However, soon they heard five robots outside. They moved to the windows to see what was going on and then they saw what Spite had left them for the night. It was a message that was burning on the ground. Why couldn't you save them? The message said in red paint as it had a burning fire around it. Everyone had that message in their mind. Why couldn't we save anyone aren't we heroes? Thought everyone left alive. Spite was breaking their minds piece by piece, and there was nothing they could do to stop him. Teacher Pov. It's day 4. Spite said he would start killing most of them that remain off today, and leave only a few left for the last day. Any idea for what he will do for the last day? Vlad King asked. No one had any guess except Nezu. I think he will burn the hero agency building down once he gets the remaining heroes out of it on the last day, and then force them to watch it burn. He then will likely set bombs off across the entire city, burning it to the ground, and force the remaining heroes to watch as a statement to their failure. Nezu said. The staff was stunned silent because that would be really brutal for the last day heroes to watch their agency and the entire city to burn before being killed off. However, it would send the message of knowing when to give up and fall back for more support. Ideally, once they had lost so many heroes in the real world, they would have requested for a large number of heroes to back them up and get top 10 heroes to help put the villain down. Otherwise, they would just be feeding the fame of the villain and only make his grasp on the underworld stronger. The teachers knew that they would need to talk to the students through this event and make sure they learned the lesson. They also needed to see how bad Izuku would be outcasted by the students. Hero Team Pov. It was now the next day for the hero team. Day 4 and they were now starting to run out of food. They could get water from other businesses by refilling their containers for drinking and cooking water, but none of them have had showers. The hero team has stayed in their groups of fives and not really split up. However, soon they were forced to get moving as large explosions rocked the city. The alarm said two buildings blew up next to each other about two blocks away from their building. It's going to be a trap. But we have no choice to go and help save people. Kendo said. Everyone agreed. It has always been a trap when they left the base to respond to these. About 30 minutes later the entire hero team was at the burning buildings and trying to put them out. The fire had spread to other buildings and now five buildings were on fire. The entire city five robots were at the site working on the fire. The heroes were stressed and spite hasn't attacked yet which was unnormal. About three hours after they arrived the fires were controlled and being put out. The five robots allowed the hero team to leave. Was it just a diversion to something else? Asked Zero. Soon they all heard a bang as Zero fell down to the ground. Sniper. Yelled Todoroki. He had everyone get behind cover, but they didn't hear any more gunshots. They were wondering if Spite was waiting for them to peek, but Dark Shadow peeked his head out since he couldn't be considered dead, unless his Tokoyami was killed. Dark Shadow said he couldn't see anyone. Then a sliding noise was heard as they all turned and saw two grenades slide to them. Grenades yelled Dark Shadow as he tried to cover the closest one, but it had already gone off. It had painted Tokoyami, and the other grenade had painted Yunagi. I think he was waiting for us to be overstressed and tired from putting the fire out. Yelled Lita. Correct assumption hero. Stated spite as the hero team saw him attacking Todoroki and kicking him across the street with a 35% Ofa kick. Everyone tried to attack spite, but he was moving so fast. Soon spite started to fall back into an alley which Rin and Bondo attempted to follow him into. Wait it might be a trap. Kendo yelled out. However, it was too late. They had run across a tripwire that set off two paint explosives that painted them completely. The hero team was in shock as they just saw two of their teammates get painted. If that had been real then there wouldn't be anything left of them is what everyone thought. Oh so foolish heroes. Always falling for simple traps. Spite laughed out. This isn't funny. You are murdering people for no reason. Your rock yelled out with tears in her eyes. No reasons. Hmm. I think I have enough reason to slaughter you damn heroes and the system you all keep up. This world refuses to change through peaceful methods. As such, violence is the only answer that has been left to me. I will force the world to look at the issues that created me and force the world to change. No one helped me when I cried for help. So why should I stop when you all cry for help? 
No one ever helped me. No one. I was left alone with no one to help me. Even when I wished for people to stand by my side as I grew up they SITLL turned their backs on me. No one stopped my bullies even when I grew older. As such, I will destroy the current society and create one where everyone is accepted regardless of their differences. Spite cried out. The hero team was stunned in silence. Was this how Izuku really felt? That no one was there for him that he was alone even in Yue. They then realized that if the video was true, then Bakugo had more or less been bullying Izuku right in front of them, and they did nothing. The hero team thought. Izuku Pov. It seems my mind is starting to break a bit. I truly hope All Might will still stand by me, or I might truly fall into the darkness after this. Though I need to put those thoughts away for now. I need to speed up the mission a bit. Too many heroes are left. Time to remove more of you heroes, I said, and they all paled. I powered up and kicked the ground resulting in it breaking. Then I punched it sending rubble at everyone. During this time I moved up to Shiazaki and slid my knife across her throat. I heard Snipe call her out, but I grabbed her arm and used her body and threw her at Kendo. While Kendo was blocked, I pulled my gun and shot Hanunuki several times. Once in the chest, once on the head. This resulted in him being called out. This left 4 class 1 as students, and 3 1B students left for a total of 7 hero team members left. I decided to wipe out 2 more from 1B, and leave Kendo alive. As everyone was attacking me as I dodged their attacks or broke them like Todoroki's ice wall. I grabbed Suburaba through his solid air wall which shocked him. Not strong enough to block my hits hero. I said as I grabbed him and slammed him into the ground. I pulled a grenade with some sticky substance on it and placed it on his arm. I then threw Tsuburaba at Oase who didn't notice the grenade. Oase caught Tsuburaba and noticed the grenade when he did however it went off right at that moment killing them both as Sniped called them out. Look like there are only 6 of you heroes left. I will leave you all for the last day. I suggest getting some sleep because I will come knocking on your door for a full out brawl where I will kill you heroes. I said as I turned around and powered Ofa up to 40% and bounced away. Teacher Pov. The teachers were all silent. They had just witnessed Spite Snow Izuku's breakdown in that fight. I'm taking that as his real feeling on how he feels here at UA isn't it? That he's alone. Combine it with the truth from the video it would be accurate wouldn't it? We've left his main bully sit right next to him and be aggressive with him, which just contained the feeling of being unsafe and the teachers not caring. Hound Dog said. The teachers were saddened at this. That feeling only got made a bit worse when every single classmate joined the hero team, and none of Izuku's friends joined his team to support him. He felt betrayed and outcasted like he was in his old schools. That's why he reacted the way he did in the assembly hall. He was pissed that people who he helped save through dangerous situations would so easily turn their back on him. They might not realize it, but they broke his trust that he had grown with them. He felt like he could rely on them in the future, but they broke that trust when they all left him alone on the villain team. All Might said. Everyone could see how Izuku felt since they now know about his past from the video. We are lucky that you found him the second time All Might or a lot of events at UA wouldn't have turned in our favor like the USJ with Asi and Mineta. Lita with the hero killer, the Kugo being saved even though it was reckless. There are so many points that Izuku steps forward and takes charge of his class and leads them to some form of victory before help can arrive to save the day. Nezu said. It just dawned on the teachers how important Izuku has been to the events at UA. Now they just had to wait for the last day to happen for this event, and they will be able to start helping their students heal from this. Hero Team Pov. Guys. We really screwed up didn't we when none of us that are friends with Izuku joined him. If that video holds any truth then what we did was a betrayal to him. Yuraka said. Everyone left alive could agree with that, and they felt the ones watching from the dead room could likely agree as well. Indeed. Izuku has done so much for a lot of us, and we just left him alone. I'm really wishing that video doesn't hold any truth, but the more I think about it, the more it would explain how Izuku reacted at the start of the year. We sat around and watched Bakugo bully Izuku right in front of us and we did nothing. What friends we are Lita stated. None of Izuku's friends were happy. Soon though Izuku or Spite would be returning for the last day to end everything, and they expected it to be a large show. Dead team room. Everyone has been watching as they were killed off. A lot of people were scared of Spite, but as time went along near the end, they could understand where Spite no Izuku was coming from. He was teaching them all lessons. Though he was doing it in a brutal manner, he was doing it for them all to learn. They also needed to apologize and help Izuku at the end of this most everyone thought, because they saw the bullying that Bakugo was doing, and didn't step in to stop it. Bakugo was far too aggressive to be left around Izuku, and nearly every single person in the dead room, agreed to keep Bakugo the hell away from Izuku moving forward. One person was still pissed that he had lost. It was Bakugo of course. 
How dare he hide this power? He's been looking down on me in all of the training, thought Bakugo. Everyone in the room could see that Bakugo was pissed, and they were all planning to get in his way when the time came. They were all not going to sit around and watch him bully Izuku anymore. Izuku Pav. As I said I wouldn't touch the hero team today and would finish them off tomorrow. However, tomorrow requires a large show. It's time to set all the bombs that I have left across the city, so I can set them all off near the end. It will be an explosive ending. I also thought about how the other students were going to react to the hero team losing in the end. Nezu better have this event put down in the UA history books, because a 1 vs 39 match with the sole person winning is an amazing showcase for future classes to learn from. I've slowly placed bombs across the city. I still had the bombs from the first time in the city hall, fire station, hospital, police station, jail, electrical plant, and water plant. However, now I'm placing bombs across the entire city. I guess I should contact Nezu and have him remove all students out of the event so they don't get caught in the destruction. Hello Nezu. I said. Yes, Izuku we are here. What do you need? Nezu asked me over the communication device. This communication is heard by the staff room and the dead room. I want you to remove all students besides the hero team at the start of the fifth day, or else they might get literally killed in the destruction I will cause, and we can't have that. I said. I could hear Nezu laugh over the communication line. I'm guessing my theory on what you're going to do for the last day is proving accurate. I can't wait to see the fireworks show. I will have all students alerted to be removed by the start of the fifth day. I will have ectoplasm clones count each student to ensure we have everyone out, and I will confirm this by 10am, and you will be free to act as you want. Nezu said. I just thanked him and got to work. Teacher Pav. Everyone was stunned silent besides Nezu laughing. It seems you called it. He's going to blow the entire city up and have the fire spread across the entire place. Cement is set while groaning because it's going to be a lot of work rebuilding everything for next year. Good thing this is only done once a year, and we had three of these cities built for each school year. Otherwise, the other class years wouldn't have a turn this year. Power Loader said. All of the teachers just laughed at Cementus and Power Loader, since they will have to rebuild the entire place. Dead Room Pav. Everyone was confused by the communication they heard between Nezu and Izuku. Anyone have any idea what they were talking about? Asked Hiroshima who was not sitting anywhere near Bakugo currently. I think I have an idea and god. I'm glad I'm already out of the game if I'm right, said Yoirozu. This caused everyone to look at her for an answer. Whatever he's about to do requires all the non-combat students to leave, meaning it's going to be destructive. The fireworks that Nezu talked about I think are bombs. I think Izuku is going to set off a large number of explosive devices around the entire city, and burn the entire city to the ground, which means he would kill almost every single robot in there. Meaning as a villain, Spite would have a body count of around 50,000 deaths at his hands in a total of 5 days. Gyoi Rosa said. This caused everyone to pale. They knew there were a lot of robots in that city, but for Spite to kill them all off. I'm so fucking glad he became a hero student, instead of going down the path of eviler Japan would be fucked. Ajiro said. Everyone could agree with that, but Bakugo just yelled that he's is better than the shitty Deku. Some of the class 1B just told him that he got taken out without much of a fight, and even resulted in the loss of one of his team members. They're talking about Jiro's death since he forced Spite to slit her throat, and he could have saved her if he had placed pressure on her wounds, and got her back to the base. Hero Team Pav. The hero team was enjoying what likely would be their last meal, since they didn't think they would survive until the next night and win the game. They all sat down and enjoyed each other's company, and were getting ready to face off Spite one last time. Izuka Pav. I had finished placing all the bombs. I even placed some around the hero base so I could set it on fire as well. I watched the drones that were following the last hero team members, and saw that they were all enjoying what would be their last meal. I was truly hoping they would still accept me at the end of this. Though I was doubtful as I knew I would likely need to close my heart to the world once again to protect myself. I decided to go to sleep for the night, and so I could have enough energy to be ready for the coming fight. The fight would be one of explosions and destruction, and I needed the energy to deal with the remaining members of the hero team, since I wanted them alive for the final show, and not dead, since it would be more impactful for the final day. As such, I started to drift off to sleep after I set the drones to alert me, if any of the hero team members decided to leave the hero HQ building. Soon the final show shall start, and the game will come to an end is the thought that went through everyone's mind that night. Izuku Pav. It was time to end this game and bring everything to an end. I grabbed my guns and knife and placed my sniper on a roof nearby in the event I needed it. I then started to walk down the street in my villain outfit. 
I was told by Nezu early this morning that the other students have been all removed from the event site, and only the robots, the hero team, and myself remain within the walls. I just slowly walked down the street taking my time as I came up towards the hero building. I could see the last heroes standing outside. I moved over into the park and they just kept their eyes on me. Hello heroes. Today is the last day of my hunting and I decided to show you my face. I said as I removed my mask. They just stared at me without saying anything. Now you see my face and now you have proof it was I the entire time. But the problem is can you defeat me or will I slaughter the rest of you heroes claiming this town is mine for good. I said as I put the mask back on. It's time to end this spite. Stated Todoroki. Everyone on the hero team agreed with him. It seems you all have some fight left in you. That's good. A hunt is boring if the prey doesn't fight back a little. As such, let us start this fight. I said. I powered Ofa up to 35% and slammed my foot on the ground, creating a wall barrier due to the ground spiking up. I then ran into the alley next to me and came around the alley quickly to get to the main street. As I came out I could see Todoroki using fire on the area I used to be in, but I had already moved to their side. Here I come heroes. I yelled out. They turned and saw me coming. Asui, Lida, Yuraka, and Kendo all worked together, while Todoroki split off a bit, since he didn't want to catch anyone in his attacks. Teacher Pav. The staff had recovered all the random students that were on the event grounds, and were waiting for the final fight to happen. Soon, the staff could see Spite walking down the main road, and saw him place a sniper in a hidden area in the event he needed it. Soon Spite arrived at the park in front of the hero agency, and their fighting soon kicked off. The hero team isn't planning for him to come from their side, said Midnight which she was proven correct when Spite came out of an alley with his speed and got up close to them. They saw most of everyone working together and Todoroki breaking off to a side to attack from a distance, so he wouldn't catch anyone in his fiber eyes near him. Hero Team Pav. The team waited outside for Spite to arrive, and soon he came. We saw him reveal his face and confirm for us it was Izuku the entire time, which gives us the proof we need to arrest Izuku if we could capture him. Soon the fighting started and Spite broke the ground. Todoroki sent fire at the area Spite was in, but we were proven wrong when Spite came out of an alley to our side and started to attack us. Izuku Pav. I must hand it to you for. You have teamwork down quite well which results in me putting more effort in. However, I'm only using 20% of my quirk. So let's kick it up to 40% shall we? I said with a cold tone as I charged up to 40% and started to turn the close combat in my favor. Soon I grabbed Kendo and slammed her into Asi. This caused them both to go flying down the street. I then jumped out of Yuraka's reach and dashed towards Asi and Kendo. I was aiming to capture them all before doing the fireworks show. Todoroki sent a flame at me as I dashed towards Asi and Kendo. I just kicked the ground and created a wall to block the fire. I then used a black whip and grabbed Asi and jumped up to a building where I pinned her down to the ground. I only had a few moments before the others got to me. In those few moments, I tied her hands behind her back, and then tossed her at Yuraka who came floating up causing them both to fly down towards the ground. Yuraka started to untie Asi, but I kicked part of the building roof off and sent it flying at them which forced her to pull them both out of the path. I then dashed up to her and grabbed one hand and twisted it behind her back and kicked a leg out from under her. I then placed one leg onto Asi to keep her down on the ground. I used my other hand to pull my knife out and put it to Yuraka's throat. Stop or I kill them both. I said to the other three members of the hero team who froze at the sight. Let them go villain. Lita yelled. I could tell he was worried about what I would do next. Todoroki looked like he wanted to take action, while Kendo looked stressed. Todoroki you better not pull a stunt. Don't want to be like Bakugo who got one of his teammates killed a few days ago. I did have Jiro in a hold like this before, and he decided to try and attack which made me cut Jiro's throat. He could have saved her as well, but he never put pressure on the wound which caused her to bleed to death. Also, you can't use your ice because Asui is here you would cause permanent damage to her body, or even kill her for real, as she isn't warmed up in the time she would require. Though I would prevent that by attacking you which means you would kill your teammate. I said as I looked at everyone. They were shocked because I was right. I had them in a no-win situation. If they attack your rocket to eyes and likely Asui as well. If they don't they also lose their teammates. Let's make a deal. I want you to tie each other hands and feet up, and the last person will be tied by Yuraka here, then I will tie her up. If you refuse I kill them. I need an audience you see for my last act, and you five will do perfectly for that. I said. After your last act as you say, will you let us go alive and turn yourself in? Asked Kendo. I looked at her and then agreed with it. Though I know we're going to actually do that. I thought. Teacher Pav. The teachers just watched the fight go on. 
Then they heard something from Spike during the fight. I must hand it to you for. You have teamwork down quite well which results in me putting more effort in. However, I'm only using 20% of my quirk. So let's kick it up to 40% shall we? Spite said. They're still amazed that Spite has so much power under his control now. Then they saw Spite defeat Assidy and use her as a weapon. Dang, Spite sure knows how to use his hostages or defeated opponents as weapons against others, Mick said. The staff agreed and thought it was an effective method, since it forces the other heroes to be careful of their teammates. Soon the fight came to a standstill, with Spite holding Assidy pinned to the ground and Yuraka being held at knife point. Spite has forced the heroes into a no-win situation again. Think this team will make the same mistake at trusting his word as the previous team did? Ectoplasm asked. I think they will. It's a hard reality that most heroes will have to deal with. Most villains that are more powerful won't care to kill the enemy off or keep their word. This is because their power sets the law for their area of control. Any hero left alive is a threat in the future, because they can learn to be better in the future when they attempt again. All Might said. The other teachers just looked on in silence at the video, and waited for the next action to happen. Izukupov. I can't believe they really surrounded again. Did the other heroes of their team not warn about me doing this last time where I killed the heroes and the hostages? Thank you for cooperating with me heroes. I promise this will be fun to watch. Well, at least for me but for you all. Well, this will be a lesson on what happens when you give up. I said. They were confused until I pulled a switch out and hit it. Gu on the area near us started to shake. Everyone on the hero team looked in fear as I had just blown up their entire hero base. Yes, I had enough booms in the base to wipe you all out in one go. Funny isn't it I decided to draw this out for days just because I could. I said with a cold tone. They just had their mouths open in shock. Now it's time to learn the lesson on why heroes shouldn't surrender to the villain, even if their teammate is captured. If you heroes give up then who saves the civilians from the villains? I asked. What are you talking about? Asked Kendo in a shaky voice. I mean this. Clicks button I said. Then the entire city went up in flames as explosions went off across the entire city. The shaking just kept going on for several minutes. The heroes were shaking. If the hero gives up then everyone dies. Even if your teammate is lost, if all the heroes just give up then who would stop the villain the next day? I asked them. This stunned them into silence. I then pulled my gun out and walked in front of Todoroki and shot him in the chest. You said you would let Yes go and turn yourself in. Shouted Lita. Never trust the word of a villain who is more powerful than you. They don't need to keep their word since their power is law in the world. I said as I looked at Lita and shot him in the chest. I then repeated for each person. Kendo, then Asi, and lastly Yuraka. Soon as a voice came over the city and announced the end of the event. Villains win. The heroes have been wiped out and the city turned to ruins. All 50,000 civilians were slaughtered in the fire and explosions. The villain known as Spide has escaped to a new city. This repeated several times as ectoplasm clones arrived to escort us all out of the area. The moment we arrived out of the city, one of the clones told me where All Might was at, and I powered Ofa up and sprinted away, as I heard the last members of the hero team call out for me. Teacher Pav. The teachers just watched the final moments of the fifth day. Spite had gotten the hero team to give themselves up because he was threatening their teammates' lives. Looks like it's over. I will send my clones to stand nearby at them and wait for the end of the game. Ectoplasm stated. Soon, they heard Spite talk to the hero team and gave his lessons which are to never gave up, nor surrender to the villain, because if the hero gives up who saves the civilians. The teachers watched as the hero agency went up in flames, and the hero team just got scared because they could have been in there. Then, Spite blew the entire city up. Nezu just started to laugh like crazy at the scene before him. Oh god yes. This is going down in the history books of UA, and will be used in lessons for the future classes on what not to do against a villain, and how to be better heroes. Nezu sat while drinking his tea and laughing like crazy still. Dead team Pav. The students in the room just watched in fear as they saw Spite force the last members to give up and surrender to them. The previous team that he did this to was yelling out and asking why they didn't listen because Spite wouldn't keep his word. Soon everyone watched as the hero building went up in flames. Then the entire city followed with Spite killing each of the remaining heroes. Almost everyone was thinking one thing, brutal. Then they heard the game over announcement, and the doors opened with an ectoplasm clone, telling them they could exit now and meet with the remaining hero team members. Also, we will be having a meeting in the assembly hall in a bit. So start heading there after you all meet up with the last of the hero team. Ectoplasm stated. A lot of the students asked about Izuku which was met with a strained expression from the teacher. He he will be meeting with the teachers first. 
They want to make sure he is in a good mindset because we know this was very hard on him, since he went against everything in his body, and played the villain role the best we could ever ask for. So let the staff handle Izuku for a while, and you will see him in the assembly room. We will have a lot to tea all about. The teacher said as they walked away. Izuku Pov. After Ectoplasm told me where I could find All Might I just powered Ofa up to 50% and dashed off. I wanted to be next to All Might no matter what since I felt my mind crumbling. Soon I came upon the staff room and bolted in and saw All Might sitting on the couch. I just ignored everyone else and found myself pulling myself very close to All Might. I started to cry and whisper, I'm a monster All Might. Though I could feel that everyone in the room heard me due to it being silent when I said it. All Might Pav. Ectoplasm had warned me that he told Izuku I was in the staff room with the rest of the staff. So I wasn't surprised that Izuku showed up. What surprised me and the staff was when Izuku bolted onto the couch and got super close with me and started to break down while calling himself a monster. The entire staff room went silent. My boy, you are not a monster. You performed well and you showed the other students many lessons that they needed to learn. Remember what I said. I will always be by your side no matter what. Even if we have to leave you a and find you a new school. I told him. The rest of the staff just started to join in after I said that, and it helped calm Izuku down. Nezu came over to Izuku and put his paw on his leg. Izuku, can you please look at me? Nezu asked. Izuku looked up at Nezu. No matter what, if you receive any backlash I want you to tell me so we can deal with it. You did what I wanted you to do in this exam, and if they got a problem with it, then they can shove it. If it comes down to finding you a new school both myself and All Might will ensure you will have the best resources and find a better school to attend where you will be welcomed. Do you understand me? Nezu asked Izuku. Izuku said he understood. We have the meeting in the assembly we are all going to. I want you sitting up by me. I don't care if everyone finds out about you being my protege anymore. It's been clear really that I've always favored you anyway, so it doesn't matter if it gets out that you are my personal student anyway. I'm sure none of the staff will be opposed to you sitting with us. Yes. I asked the rest of the staff and Nezu agreed with me. The staff was not going to let Izuku's mental state fall. We already know he's going to have a large number of mental problems we will find from his past, but depending on how these students react, there will be some problems from them as well. Dirt Pav. Soon everyone was in the assembly hall except the teachers and Izuku. Some of them were wondering where he was when Bakugo made a comment. He's probably afraid for all the villain shit he did. He's better off leaving UA and becoming a villain than staying here. This comment that Bakugo made had set everyone off. Oh hell no. You don't get to talk shit. If anyone is a villain it would be you if that video holds any truth whatsoever. Also, everything that Izuku did in the event was his role to play because of the team he was on by himself. We all choose to go on the hero team and still lost because Izuku was willing to put the effort in that his role required unlike we did. We got complacent and it cost us the match. The old Yuraka which was agreed by almost everyone in the room. Some tried to calm people down and said that they didn't know if the video was true or not. That is when they heard, the video is true by the way. Everything he did and what All Might said happened. A voice said. Everyone turned around and saw Izuku sitting on the stage next to All Might who was hugging Izuku. The rest of the staff was also on the stage with Nezu sitting next to Izuku's other side. Everyone was silent at this. Indeed in Bakugo. Don't think you're walking away from not receiving punishment for what you've done. You got about 10 years worth of illegal quirk usage and other crimes that will need to be dealt with. Your old schools will also be looked into since they didn't mark anything on their records about your behavior. If they had, you would never have set foot in this school or likely any other hero school either. Nezu said. What? I was just putting the damn quirkless Deku in his place. It was my right to do that to the quirkless freak. Yelled Bakugo. Everyone who attempted to defend Bakugo went silent at this. Then everyone was shocked. Boo. So I'm a freak Bakugo. All Might asked. Everyone was confused and Bakugo didn't understand. You said quirkless people are freak. Fun fact, I was quirkless as well. I'm a strange case like Izuku. It's one of the reasons I'm so close to him. I myself didn't receive my quirk into my teens. I got my quirk about 1 to 2 years before Izuku's age. That is why I am so close to him and noticed the signs of him being a late bloomer when I trained him, since it was the same things I went through. So, Bakugo, I'm a freak right? All Might asked in a pissed off tone. Well, that explains why you always favored Izuku and took him on as your protege Eraser had said, which sent another round of shocks through every student. What? Every single student screamed even Bakugo yelled about it. Really Eraserhead? I thought we would leave that fact alone unless they ask All Might said. Eraserhead just shrugged his shoulders at All Might. 
No, Todoroki All Might isn't my biological father, but I have called him dad, and he's accepted that title from me. Izuku groaned out at the look in Todoroki's eye. It still proves my dad might theory. Yelled out Todoroki. Everyone was just confused, but Izuku just moved everyone along. Anyway, let's review the event, shall we? Nezu said with a cheerful tone. Everyone settled back down and started to watch the last week's worth of video go by, asked Nezu pulled up highlights. So I take it no one noticed the drones following you all around during the event, and the week of training and planning you were all meant to do? Nezu asked and got confused looks. They didn't or else I would have had to change my plans. They should really get a lot of extra credit for those drones. They really are good that no one noticed them at all. Izuku said. Everyone was asking about what drones when Izuku pulled a phone out and made the drones fly down in front of everyone. These drones that I've used to spy on all of you for the past two weeks since the game officially started the first day of training which allowed me to spy on you with the drones nearly 24-7 when they could follow you. I didn't have them follow you into your private rooms by the way. Anywhere outside that was public area is where the drones followed you. Izuku said. Soon they moved on after everyone calmed down. The teachers ripped into the hero team for not planning or doing teamwork training. The staff went really hard on Bakugo for his lack of leadership which made Bakugo look pissed, but also a bit ashamed, since it was his job to lead the hero team, and he failed. They talked about the first three kills and how Izuku didn't leave them much choice, but to get close, and had planned his ambush really well by playing against the hero's strengths. The teachers did talk about how they needed to look for traps when they find a hero left alive after a villain, because it could be a trap like it was. Izuku used it as a physiological torture method to remove their will to fight in the long run. They did say there wasn't much they could do about the taxi, but they should be careful when something weird happens and keep their distance unless they have no choice. Then they arrived on the second day when Izuku blew up several buildings. Never hand yourself over to the villain. Even at the threat of civilian life. You can't save everyone. Vlad King yelled out. The students from that day looked down in shame. A villain that is more powerful won't care about his word because his power is the law for anything that he controls, Izuku said which shocked everyone that he was talking to them. Then they arrived at the battle against the Ajiro team. Sorry for dragging you Ajiro, Izuku said, and Ajiro said it was fine. It taught him a lesson. The teachers talked again about looking for traps, and if the hero team had taken the time they might have seen the trap. Ajiro might have been still lost, but the other hero wouldn't have been. Next up of the second day was the problem with Jiro's death. Bakugo, you let your teammate die. We didn't call Jiro out because if you had put pressure on the wound she would have lived because recovery girl watched the video, and the slice across the neck was too light for Mizuku. Meaning you let her die because you were to focus on the villain and those in present danger in front of you. Eraser had cut in with a cold tone. Bakugo lowered his head in shame and said he understood. The bombing of the building was fun to see everyone's faces. In reality, it would be less effective since you all would have better access to money to go buy supplies and stuff, but it worked here. Izuku said while looking more forward instead of into All Might now. Soon they moved to the third day where Izuku had started to use the sniper. That is also another problem. There was no backup leadership created in the event of your death Bakugo. You should have prepared that. Nezu pointed out. Then the teachers started to pick a part of slaughter fight where Izuku had taken a lot of people on in a fight, and could have killed more people, if he didn't plan to leave them alive. You all failed to plan out attacks and work on teamwork in the training week. This leads to you all randomly charging and not combing your strengths to lock Izuku down. Midnight pointed out. You all also didn't know Izuku's upper limit which he kept hidden from even the staff. Well, expect Nezu and All Might. No one knew that All Might and Nezu had been limiting the percent that Izuku is allowed to use in training. Vlad King stated. Nezu explained to the people that looked annoyed at that. It's due to the fact that if Izuku hit any of you with a full 50%, he could really kill any of you if it lands straight on. We've decided to start letting Izuku use more of his quirk in training moving forward, since he has shown that he can handle changing his quirk power when he lands his punches to ensure no deaths. Nezu said. Now they move to the third night where Izuku invaded the hero HQ. You all should have had patrols going through the entire building, since you knew that Izuku had already planted bombs in the building once already. Power Loader said. Everyone could only agree with this since it leads to a lot of their deaths that night. Soon they arrived on the fourth day. They talked about how Izuku drew the heroes out and made them waste their energy before attacking at long range and then moving towards them. Todoroki, you could have used your ice to cover you guys to escape. It would have made it harder for me to get close and know you were all still there. Izuku said. This was a valid point. It would likely have saved two of their team members also, if he had put ice up to block people from coming towards them from any sides, and made an exit and lead everyone away. 
the students then asked Izuku if that was his real feelings on his safety and him being accepted here at UAE based on his speech on that day. Yes to a degree. I've had to deal with Bakugo pulling all the crap he has done, and the teachers never really did anything about it. He uses his quirk in class a lot, which is how he would bully me in our old schools. As such, it's become a fear response to him using his quirk. Then no one joined the villain team even though they could have. It was heartbreaking when all my friends didn't at least join me. Though I am used to being isolated. The world sees quirkless people as something to kill for the most part, and people would beat me or put me down any chance they had, even though I was still human. Izuku said. Everyone besides Bakugo apologized to Izuku which made him happy that they still wanted to be friends with him after everything. The teachers talked about all the bombs that Izuku had planted without being spotted which was a very big feat. Then we made it to the last day. The final fight. The teachers talked again about how the last members didn't heed the warning from their former teammates that it already died. Never give yourself up to the villains. We are seeing an increase in villains that will act just like how Izuku did during this event. If they have the power they won't care about keeping their word and will kill anyone that opposes them. These villains are the type that older heroes fought before I came around. These villains are far more ruthless and brutal in their methods. That is why Izuku did everything he did because these are the villains you will be fighting moving forward in the future. All Might said. This made some of the students worried, but only made them steal their dedication, since they have gotten a taste of it via Izuku. Now, we are here at the end. I'm going, to be honest. How many of you can go back to normal with Izuku? It's a concern of UA's staff that you all might outcast Izuku moving forward, and we need you to be honest, so if that happens, we can find Izuku a new school where he can be accepted at. Nezu said. This statement shocked everyone in the assembly hall even Bakugo. Sir, I can't say it will be normal per se. We all now know the undeniable truth that Izuku can be very deadly under that smile of his. But I can say at least for me that I still consider him a friend and want him to stay. Though I'm going to be far warier of him in training moving forward now. Lita said as he stood up. Soon everyone but Bakugo stood up and agreed with that statement. Nezu and the staff were proud of them. They did notice Bakugo didn't stand up though. Good. By the way, Kuririshima, you and Izuku will change desks from now on, so Izuku isn't near Bakugo anymore. Bakugo we will be talking about your past actions, but know from this point forward if we allow you to stay you will be on thin ice. Do I make myself clear? Bakugo agreed with it, but knew he would have a lot of punishment coming his way. All Might, I won't talk about what you did in the video since you and Izuku have already settled that matter, but don't pull something like that again. We are lucky you found him the second time or spite might have become reality. Nezu said in a cold tone which made everyone flinch since he didn't have his famous smile anymore. Time skip. The next semester came and the winter break passed. Bakugo had a lot of punishments placed on him. He couldn't use his quirk anymore, since he had quirk bracelets on him at all times that could only be taken off by a teacher. The Kugo recorded would show his past actions, and would be public knowledge if someone requested his hero recorded. The Kugo had to attend anger management and therapy for the rest of his time at UA. Everyone else supported Izuku and helped him heal from his past. The Bakuswood was hanged out less around Bakugo but still did here and there. It became less of a tight-knit group until Bakugo could prove himself to them that he has changed. About two months into the new semester Bakugo had approached Izuku and told him that he wasn't ready to provide an apology, but one day would get there. Izuku simply responded by saying, I'll always wait for you to return Kakin. And then turned and left which left Bakugo in shock at hearing his childhood nickname again since Izuku had stopped since the event had started. Soon everything would improve for the better as time passed, and the now 2 and 2B students got prepared for their future. This concludes this what if series. If you enjoyed the video leave a like and subscribe with post notifications. So you'd be notified when the next what if release. Until next time.